I know you've gone over this before, but can you just um, correlate the, the homology between HIV and COVID with those people who are showing up when they, they were negative, but then they tested positive? That's my main concern. Like, is this, you know what I mean? Is this like a type of virus that will be similar to HIV, but it's airborne. That's the scary part. So can you, would you mind just okay, talk so about let, that? Okay, so let me, let me try to break, break down your question a little bit if I understand it. Uh, so you're asking why, the very first part of the question was why people were testing negative at first and then positive? No, no. When um, in China, yeah. the 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 one the people who were like they were in the hospital and they were what? healed, so to speak, and but then they tested negative. Like they would do all the protocol, you know, um, and they were released from the hospital negative. But later on, a percentage of those people were positive again. Now, when I think about that, you know what I'm saying, like. Right. They, they were, I think they were treated with like, weren't they treated with um, antiviral HIV medication? Well, some pa some patients were treated with, you know, with uh, the cocktail. Um, but you you have a good point, you know, that someone's treated, they're, they're tested positive, they're being treated, they come out, and then there's some sort of reinfection. Uh, that reinfection uh, could be a lot of different things. One is, is that maybe they're reinfected from a slightly different strain and their immune system is down because they've been fighting that infection for a while and it's easier for them to get that, that slight mutation that's running around in the population. That's one possibility. Another is that more probable is, is that it goes dormant and then it, it flares up again and okay. you know and i, I that, that's a, that's a big concern i think is, is that we don't know like like i was mentioning when they're doing these tests they're doing the probably the nasal swab test um maybe maybe an antibody test i mean they're just starting to do the antibody test so you know when, when i think when they're letting these patients out uh, it's probably just reconfirming with that reverse transcriptase PCR method. That's just, that, that's probably, t you know, testing for nasal, you know, or, you know, something like that. I don't think they're specifically testing the T cells. And I think that if they start testing these individuals with the T cell specifically, it, they'll probably start noticing that there are messenger, that there's, there's, um, there's RNA within that T cell that's SARS-CoV-2. And it's pot because it doesn't replicate as much in that T cell. It does other things like downregulate the T cell, but it doesn't divide that much. It divides, I think, in other cells, uh, you know, like the A2 cell in our lung, but not so much the, the actual T cell. So you could have, you should go negative, on a nasal swab, but it's laying dormant in your T cell. And then all of a sudden it starts to, it, it starts to, you know, pop up again. You know, that, 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 uh, for some reason, you know, that T cell starts to, um, activate viral, viral production and then it spits it out into, you know, into the bloodstream. Now, is that, how is that similar or how is that compared to HIV, how HIV works? Well, HIV is a the HIV virus uh, will is is a retrovirus that stays dormant within the, within the cell, and then some sort of stressor happens, and and uh, you know it can start multiplying again, um, and it downregulates it downregulates the immune system using you know a few different mechanisms. One of the mechanisms is the cat protein. So these viruses sometimes these viruses create proteins that actually down regulate the immune system. I don't have any evidence. There's no evidence out there that that states that this particular virus creates a protein that down regulates the immune system. At least we don't know of that. We don't have any evidence 
of that happening. HIV does have HIV, HIV does have that capability. Um, but I, you know, I'm really concerned about gain of function with that CD, that CD147, and that, um, you know, those other receptors like CD209 and T0, uh, uh, CD299. But um, you know, this is I am real concerned about HIV-like syndrome popping up. Uh, you know, a few years from now. Right, I heard you meant that. Yeah. That's what really prompted me to contact. I'm glad you opened up your mind. I've been thinking about that since you mentioned that on your interview. So you think that it's possible that this, because how, how, because I'm totally so out, so you please bear with me. How, um, how significant is it that there's homology between COVID and HIV? Is that, is that significant information? Well, it's very significant because I'm saying, I'm not to cut you off, but just a friend of mine was like, when I mentioned it to him, he kind of downplayed it. He's like, well, that happens in every virus. And so I was a little confused and I'm glad that's well, not true, right? No, no, it's not true that every virus has HIV homology. <laughs> and, and the thing is, is if it was naturally selected, you know, if it, if it naturally happened, why did it happen? Why did it happen in four different areas of a very, very important protein, which is the S protein? Right. You know, right. it should be somewhere else in the genome that seems to be more benign in, in, in the, in, you know, for the genome. Um, to, if there was just one insert, yeah, I would say, yeah, it was probably zoonotic for the HIV homology part of it. But, um, but four separate inserts? No, no, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen zoonotic. It was, it was, it was, wow. it was designed that way. It was, wow. it was so, designed yeah. or selected in the lab to do that. You know, you can do two ways. You can do two things in the lab. You can um, use molecular biology to insert stuff in the genome. Or what you can do is keep on infecting cells or animals, animal models, until you get what you're looking for. You see what I'm saying? You know, and, and you can just keep on infecting, infecting, infecting until you see gain of function. So, um, but, you know, this stuff goes all the way back to 2008. That shows that they did this. I mean, you know, I've been, you know, saying this from day one that the, the research papers proves that this was bioengineered. Right. Can you? Um, I tried to get you know listen to. I really appreciate you, by the way. You are working so hard on this, and um, you know, you're very, very well informed. And for as far as YouTube goes, you are um, a go-to channel for me. There's either there's either you know super sensationalism or not enough information. So I appreciate you a lot. And um, I so I, I was wondering if. Um, have you already pointed out where these, these, these papers or this information, the information that you said goes back to 2008? Where can I find that or oh, where can, can we see that? Oh, you can, you can, you can go to my website, uh, the-studio-reykjavik.com. It's not in this video, but if you go to a, a, the previous video I have, you can just click the link and then it'll take you to the website. Once I'm done with okay. the broadcast, I'll, I'll put the website links um, in the description oh. box. But all my videos, all you have to do is just pick a, just randomly pick a video other than this one, and you'll be able to link to my website. And then there's a button on the front page, the home page. It's called Medicine. And uh, in that, in that, uh, on that page, there's tons of PDF files that you can you can reference. And I suggest wow, you read them all. I, I suggest you read them all because you'll get super informed and you'll understand how I arrived to everything that, I, that I'm saying. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Cattell. And um, you know, you're in my prayers. And uh, I see that you're a night owl, so like me, so I appreciate that too. Um, I don't, I don't want to take up any more of your time, but thank you so much for answering my question. Yeah, no problem. And all right, have a great evening. You too, bye. Bye. Okay, I'll take I'll take one more question. So if someone wants to call me, they can they can call me. The number is. Hello? Hello? Hi, how are you? Uh, you Hi, how are you? Is that you, Paul? Yeah, it is. But it, you, you'll, need, you'll need to turn down your computer. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 I had to kill my, my iPad. Uh, wow, this is strange. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, Fauci is a bad player in this, or is it complacency on his part? And why haven't we heard this through mainstream media, do you think? All right, so uh, mainstream media uh, has two problems. One is that they're dumb, and the other is that they're complicit, you know, because of the powers that be that own the organization. Um, sure. In terms of Fauci, uh, he's been a well-known player in HIV research, um, right, yeah. you know, and he he has patents that leads me to believe that he can profit from therapeutics on this particular virus. And, so and I think that, 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 that should be grounds for him not to be on in the position that he is in at the NIH. Agreed. Are these sideline patents during his research or 
how, how are they, the patents presented to, um, to, you know? It's related to the, the, um, the spike protein on HMV. Okay. So the so glycoprotein, the glycoprotein 120. Right. He may have other patents that I don't know of, but that's the one that I've been told. Um, now, if that's the case, and there's this glycoprotein 120 homology that's, that's happening on this virus, is there some sort of way for him to profit from it with a vaccine? I don't know. Um, there's a lot of suspicions that I'm starting to get from Fauci. Some of the things oh. that he said early on, I just, you know, did not, did not seem to, it almost seemed like he didn't take it seriously at first. Right, that's and, kind of what I gathered from what I, I've gleaned from the multitude of videos I've seen. Um, it, it, it seems that, uh, now I just finished with uh, uh, Molino's uh, video uh, concerning China's input and responsibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found it very enlightening, but the, um, um, the thing that I, I don't hear it being combined is the, you know, the AIDS, uh, the HIV um, involvement, uh, it, it being, it's not being clearly laid out by all parties that are doing presentations, uh, you know, as far as it being um, of U.S. involvement in the development of the, of the, of the, the coronavirus. Right. That's why I'm going to be talking to, to uh, George Webb. I think he's a leader in knowing exactly what was going on with Fort Detrick. Yeah, oh, so, his, oh, his presentation was excellent as far as uh, clarifying it. Uh, you know, he, he uses music and a lot of other methods to get it across, and I thought it was very, uh, uh, it was very enlightening. But it, uh, it made it pretty clear that there, you know, we we are kind of hip deep in the in the, the situation. But uh, how do we get a chronology of this information uh, combined? Like, is that even possible? Well, we're trying. We're trying. I mean, if you, you'll start noticing on the internet, and I'm kind of trying to lead the charge on this. But, you're going to start. You're going to start seeing that there's a coordinated effort. You know, when you see in the mainstream media, you see that there seems to be a coordinated effort between MSNBC, CNN, okay. and Fox, and all that. You know, there seems to be a coordinated effort when they talk about things, right? Yeah, that, that's the talking points, and it's been obvious for you know months now. But right. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to use we're going to use the power of the internet and, and YouTube and you know other platforms like Breakdown, and we're going to start yeah. doing coordinated um, um, presentations about certain pieces to the COVID nineteen crisis. Some of yeah. it will be scientific. Some of it will be, you know, more geopolitical, or you know, uh, you know, or um, you know, targeted to specific people like Fauci or Tedros. But there's going to be a more concerted effort where it's we're we're going to hit them on multiple channels at the same time. It's going to be a coordinated effort. What it's going to do is it's going to raise the voice of let's yeah, say yeah. The, ind the independent platforms that right. will try to drown out what mainstream media is. I don't, I don't think there's any other other means of, of making that kind of a presentation. I mean, unless it's, it's a, a consolidated effort. See, we have we have the strength that we aren't beholden to advertisers. Right. Uh, like they, they are on, let's say, CNN. And they, they have, they, the best they can do is like a two, two minute or three minute package before they have to go to the next advertiser. Right? Right. We, right. Can, we can have 30 minute or one hour discussions in depth. They can't do that. And, that, and that when, we, when we, meaning you know, multiple channels out there, are saying in a coordinated effort, uh, you know, these things, and they're right. one hour yeah. long or 30 minutes long, we'll get more street cred than the mainstream media. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it, it has to be done that way. I mean, if, if we don't unite right. and just get this information out, uh, you know, thicken up layers, it's, it's, you have to smother the other efforts. Right. Uh, exactly. But I'm here in Oklahoma City, and I, you know, I see, a, you know, it's a, like an AWACS central base. I see their activities increased, and we, uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, uh, command aircraft coming in and out of the base. Uh, it's activity I've never seen before, and I've lived around here for 20 years, and it's it's it's, it's thick and heavy. It, it it has me concerned, and I you know I'm just well, that, what... that's that's the reason that's another component of this is the, the, the erosion of our civil liberties. Absolutely, you know, we, we as citizens need to rise up and make people accountable for the ones that cause this, this destruction. And then not only that, we need to take back our government. We need to go back to what I call the pre 9 11 days, where we don't have all this never ending tyranny and surveillance state and forced vaccinations and all this. But we as a people, if we rise up and say no, enough is enough, and we're going back to a pre 9 11 day period, then, then you know, we can do it. We can make this happen, but we have to all work together. I believe that. I, I, I was in IT for 20 years before I, I, I had to leave for medical reasons. But uh, I, whenever they started, uh, um, I mean, I, I watched them selling, trying to get cookies in, into advertising or, or websites when websites were being developed. And I recognized it early on that it's, we're getting way too deep into tracking data. And uh, uh, I mean, it just kept getting thicker and thicker and thicker. So, you know, here we are. Um, and like you said, post 9 11, um, everything changed. So um, it's kind of scary. But, uh, you know, I'm 67 and uh, um, I saw your. Uh, one of your early videos uh, on YouTube concerning the uh, uh, coronavirus, um, uh, as far as I think it was the original video that you made where you uh, you defined the uh, development of the cell uh, itself. So um, I've been following you since, and uh, you've done a terrific job. And I want to thank you for the effort that you put out. You're obviously a, a hard hitter, and um, I, I've enjoyed the, uh, the the follow through that you provided, and also the, the, the additional uh, contacts that you uh, made made us aware of. I mean, it, it's you know between. And probably you and four others that uh, I followed, uh, I've gathered more information in probably the last 
uh, six weeks than I, you know, the previous two months. You know, so you've done a terrific job. I want to thank you. I appreciate it. But, you know, what, you know, not only are we trying to do the coordinated effort on the Internet to inform the public, but it's important for the public to take that information and reach out to their representatives and tell them they are not going to be cash. Our, Absolutely. You know, and, 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 you know, we have to tell them that we do not want this bio patriot act in any form happening. Right. And, and, and I, I have to say from personal experience, if you do not stay on your legislators, people, you don't stay on your representatives, you don't stay in contact and keep the pressure up, you're not going to get anything done. Uh, it's just not going to happen. Uh, they can hear all the grumbling uh, from the public. Uh, but unless they feel the pressure of the public contacting them, they will not act. Right, right. And, you know, that's, you know, that's right. my so, 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 you know, people like Stefan and Atwood and, and Webb and myself, um, even Dr. Shiva, you know, there's lots right. of us trying to get the word out, and, and, and we do it all in our own little way. We all have our own little way of doing it. But, but we're trying to inform the public, but we all need to work together, not just the, you know, the, the, the talking heads on YouTube, but also the, the American public. They take this information and get engaged. Because you know, we have to just keep on bombarding them. We, you know, we just have to keep on. You know, this is a war. This is a war. They're going to try to take and erode our civil liberties. And I, you know, that's why I'm, I'm staying up and all you know hours into the morning. I usually go to bed at five o'clock in the morning. You know, usually, you know, usually there's like a you know ten thirty guy. You know, right. ten thirty. You know, you know, wake up at seven. Now I'm going to bed at I'm going to bed at five o'clock in the morning. Or going to bed. You know, but you know, it just it just I'm, I'm, we're all we've all turned into habitual insomniacs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but um. Just know you're appreciated. You have my phone number. If you ever need any kind of support or help, you know, reach out. I'll be glad to do anything I can. I've been in IT, like I said, for 20 years. I'll be glad to contribute. So uh, anyway, I appreciate uh, it. But you know, uh, the biggest contribution is sharing the videos because we, we're getting we're getting demonetized. We're getting shadow banned. You know, and we you know we need to share, share, share these videos and get it out and and, and read those documents that are put on you know individual uh, websites that, that have the, P, the scientific PDFs of what's going on or the patents or whatever, and just get involved and tell your your representatives. Hell no, we're not going to let this happen to our country. Okay, well listen, Paul, I'll let you go on and let you take another call if if you if you want to. But uh, I, I do I do I appreciate the time that you put in, and I certainly appreciate your input and your help. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Take care, my man. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay. So I'll take one more call, and then I'm going to go to bed. Hey, how you doing, Dr. Cottrell? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I enjoy your show. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, yeah. how's, things, how's things going in California right now? You know what? It, it's going all right. Um, the streets are pretty dead. Um, everybody's locked in place. Um, you know, in certain areas, there, there's a lot of people wearing masks, but not everybody is. There's certain areas where people aren't wearing masks. I see people who aren't taking it serious, and then you have a lot of people who are taking it serious. How's the food situation? Um... There was a couple times when I went to Walmart and, uh, you know, of course, the toilet paper was sold out and water sold out. Um, you know, right now what they, what, what they have going on is people are getting in line, like in front of Safeway, and uh, they're only letting, like, maybe 10 people at a time go in the store. And then, so you just got a big old line of people standing out of the store, you know, taking turns going in to, to do their shopping. Yeah. So for you, yeah, are, you, are you going out, like, once a week for shopping, or you're pretty much prepped? Um, you know what? I, I Personally, I stopped up, you know. I've been uh, paying attention to this for a while, and uh, most of the stuff that I have is at home now. And, uh, you know, I bought a whole bunch of seeds and, and start my garden. Um, Going to buy a couple of chickens pretty soon, you know. Um, so so I'm not going to the store too often. I'm pretty much settled. Um, a lot of people, though, are using Instacart, which is uh, it's like a gig app. So instead of going to the store, you, you call this, this gig app, and people will go shopping for you. And they also have special programs for, like, seniors who, uh, you know, are hungry and need to go shopping where um, I'm not sure who's doing it, but people will go and, and shop for them for free. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, helping the elderly is really yeah. important. Yeah, it is definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to tell you though, uh, Paul, you were talking about the strains. You were wondering how many strains are out there. Yeah. Um, I did. I found an article, um, and it basically says that there's, you know, of course, there's a whole bunch of different strains, but they found eight distinct um, COVID strains. Um, you know, the word they were using was distinct, and then the article was saying because of that, um, they feel like, uh, you know, it's going to make it tougher to make a, a vaccine, and it's going to go. The situation is going to go longer than what people expect. You know, and, and I guess the word extent, the word um, distinct, 
was saying, you know, I'm not really a science guy, but it's basically saying that these strains were different enough that they could call them distinct strains. Yeah, I'm curious to know so, if the mutation is in the spike protein area. And, you know, if there's enough of a change where it, it, it changes the affinity between the receptors. Um, could, you, yeah, could you send me that article? Yeah, I actually already did send it to you, but I will, um, on this video, on the bottom, I will send that article to you. Uh, the place where I get it, it's uh, like Thailand News or something. Yeah, 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 that's a good source. Have, yeah. Oh, man, they, they have been on point. They come out with, like, the newest stuff that you don't hear for a while. It's, it's a really, but I will definitely send it to you. Um, it will be under this video, and I'll go ahead and post it. So Okay, that would be great. I'll, but, I'll take yeah. a look at it. Because I heard that there were three. Yeah, that was yeah, that was recently, and I, you know, but I guess it really de depends on how you define distinct, you know. Yeah, so basically what this article was saying was that what they found, they just they, they studied all the different strains, because of course it is mutating a lot, so you have a whole bunch of different strains, but the, the differences aren't that big, you know, but the big differences were found in eight strains so far, um, and, and, you know, that's what it was pointing out, so, you know, and, and then I heard somebody say, too, that, you know how they have the RAT G13 strain, right, mm -hmm. and then you got the the, 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 the main strain, the, the SARS-2, the COVID 2 strain, uh, somebody had mentioned, was saying that maybe the RAT uh, 13G strain was actually put out first as a spread in order to spread all around the world without people noticing it. Well, here's, okay, here's, little food. Yeah, I've heard that theory. This is this is my perspective on it. If you look at what's uh -huh. been sequenced, there are far more yeah. Wuhan strains than there are of the RATG13. When I looked at it right, on right. March 24th, there were over 40 sequenced Wuhan. And I stopped counting when it hit 40. So it's, it's, you know, it's more okay. 40 so, so on Wuhan. But there are very minor mutations. Right. But there was only yeah. one RATG13. So that leads me to believe okay. that the RATG13 was not leaked out, um, um, you know, before Wuhan was leaked. Because right, if right. it was leaked out earlier, then I would think that there would have been more sequencing caught. You know? Right, right. Because what, what happens is that a patient gets it in a new area, and they start to sequence to, to, to match the database to see if it's very similar to other areas. Of the yeah. That's why they do it. So I would have right. suspected that RATG13 would have, would have had a lot more sequencing data in the NIH database. Yeah, yeah, well, the reason why I thought that was interesting was um, because what, what the thought was maybe the, the viruses were designed to attack in certain ways and in different angles. Like, for example, you let out uh, a virus, the first virus that doesn't really affect people too much, but they develop the antibodies, right? And then when you let out the second virus and they catch that virus, then it causes that cytokine, that cytokine storm or autoimmune response because of the difference in the virus. Because, you know, uh, SARS-1, when they tried to make a vaccine for it, they weren't able to make a vaccine for it because every time they tried to uh, give the vaccine to the host, it caused the antibodies to, to go haywire. So, you know, that was my concern about, about, you know, when they talk about the second wave, you know, maybe this virus is created so that uh, when you get reinfected, every time you're infected, the reinfections are even worse than the original infection. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, and this is why I think that there is something called uh, antibody dependent enhancement. So yeah. once you get yeah. the antibody, it attaches to the spike protein, and that antibody will attach to uh -huh. uh, other cells that have something called an FC receptor that'll attach mm -hmm. to the, the antibody. That antibody is holding the spike protein, and it helps actually right. to bring the, the virus into the cell through this antibody right. Right. dependent enhancement. So I think that might be part of the mechanism. And then once the, the cell is infected, then it creates the cytokine yeah. storm. That might be yeah. a mechanism. Now, so the definitely yeah. Now, let, me, let, yeah. let me throw something to you, though. That is, let me throw something at you that's like far out in left field. Okay, this is just something I kind of stumbled across, and I'm just going to throw it out there as a thought experiment, okay? So there, there's a few papers coming out of China, scientific papers, where they were able to create uh, synthetic biology, a virus that is actually nanotech made out of silica, and that is, it, it, they actually are able to get to replicate. This is synthetic biology. Now, now the left field part is, what if um, somebody took this technology, the scientific papers out there, they can actually do this, right? And they wrapped it with uh, uh, the virus biology and made a hybrid, right, type of virus that you can trigger using frequencies like 5G, certain frequencies to cause well, hey, 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 we gotta be careful here because my channel, yeah. you know, my channel oh, is watched. Sorry. We can't use the word, uh, yeah, we can't E7. use it by E7. E7. Mm -hmm. so, I'm sorry, E7. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, Paul. No, that's I forgot that. But, um, so, so what if the E7 could trigger specific mutations at certain times, almost like a video game? The reason why I say that is because I did read another paper, um, came from the Journal of Biology, and they discovered that, that this virus was one simple mutation away from being able to, I think it was, jump into pigs. And it was just one simple mutation. Um, and so I'm like, well, what if you could trigger, like, let's say they have these eight different strains, you attack them, you use them to attack society in different places, um, in, in various ways and different angles, you know, like your troops, right? Um, and then you can trigger mutations wherever you want to trigger them using, let's say, a cell phone or, 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 a tower, or an E7 tower, you know? Um, I know it's a far out kind of thought, but I was kind of shocked when I found that paper, the scientific paper on, on the fact that they can create 
nanotechnology viruses that actually replicate in your body. And I'm like, well, well what if they can wrap that with, with, the, and with that with the biology, and now they have a way where they can push a button or a certain frequency and control the virus to do what, what they want it to do? I know it's way out there in left field. Well, but I, I, you I know, there's some, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know about the nanotechnology part of it, but, but I, there, Mike Adams did a really good piece on uh, natural news. You know that, yeah. that, and he and we talked about it. And I even showed, I shared a link to that paper mm -hmm. that he wrote um, or article, and it, it shows that electromagnetic radiation, you know, like mm -hmm. E7, can create a a um, uh, a uh, ROS response, a reactive oxygen species response, that leads to an yeah. increase in what is called NF kappa. NF kappa, yeah. when it's upregulated, will produce pathogenesis. You know, where, where it'll, it'll produce mm -hmm. um, you know uh, uh, diseases. Now there's, right, there's right. so and that could you know, downregulate you know the immune system or create you know a very pro-inflammatory response and everyone knows that if you're over-inflamed it's harder to, you know it's easier to get sick you know yeah. so th it doesn't surprise me that uh, uh, um, electromagnetic frequency or radiation like E7 yeah. could produce an immune response that leads right. to more viral production because yeah, yeah. Uh, more viral production and more infection because we know that cellular right. stress will upregulate certain certain receptors uh, and those receptors could be used by the virus or yeah, you know, down regulate yeah. or down regulate certain proteins that help the cell fight viruses so yeah. you know, I think being around an electromagnetic you know uh, radiation grid for too long mm -hmm. could really affect your immune yeah. system and there's right, and this, this right. paper also was talking about the, the potentiality of electromagnetic radiation uh, causing um, hypoxia because of the affinity, uh, uh, lowering the affinity of oxygen to the heme group so it's yeah. not so far off. Your, your idea is not so far off. I don't know about the, yeah. you know, the, nano, the specific nanotechnology part of it, but yeah, I do I think that electromagnetic that. radiation yeah. does lead to a lower immune system. Yeah, and you know what? That's why I, I kind of like, um, there's a, a woman by the name of Sharon Edwards, and her perspective was that the virus had to be created using an advanced um, AI system, and that it's very, a very advanced virus, and that the way yeah, it was think, put together is things uh, that it was meant to do. Yeah. I don't think, yeah. I, don't be, I, don't I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think that, you know, okay. this was a slow, engineered virus that you know goes back years and eventually you know as it moved through the research got more and more and more virulent and, and gained more yeah. and more function but yeah, i agree with that i agree with that but what i'm saying is like what if on, on one side they took the time to create it and then on the other side somebody said hey wait a second we got this other technology what if we join them together and then when, when they decided to join the two technologies together um you know they could have used an ai to, to put it together and join the i don't like i said it's that way out there left field but the nanotechnology and they joined it with uh the biology that they had grown after, for over a long period of time, you know, and created this. You know, it, I mean, anything's in, in the realm of possibility. I mean, they could have used some sort yeah. of machine learning algorithm to determine what's the best topology for the spike protein. But artificial intelligence wasn't that strong back in 2008. The artificial intelligence yeah, machine learning is yeah. really, really took off, I would say, in 2017. Right. So right, I don't. Right. I, you know, this this I can prove that this development goes all the way back to 2008, and the, the machine right, right. the machine learning wasn't that good. Right, yeah, that's right, why I think right, this is more. Know. This is more. Uh, let's say human engineer. Let's say human bioengineer versus AI bioengineer. Right. Right. Okay. You know, I, I I also wanted to add. You know, I really I have. You know, I don't have no evidence for it, but I, I really do have a feeling that uh, that this virus stays in the body. I don't think it comes out. I think it goes dormant. I think it. Uh, I think right. it leaves. I think you're right. Yeah. You know, and and you know, that is a scary thought. You know, I mean, just to think about what we're facing, like as a society and the whole world. I mean, this is going to completely change everything. You know, I mean. Uh, we're, we're talking about losing control of our lives in so many different ways, you know, because of uh, out of fear, you know, out of, because of this virus. I mean, uh, people don't shake hands no more. People don't hug. I have you have family members who haven't seen each other and who, you know, like even in my family, when we go to deliver, when we want to deliver something to someone in the family, we just drop it at the front door. We don't, you know, talk and, you know, and then, yeah, so it's, it's a really crazy time that we're living in that's really going to shape society. And, you know, as for Dr. Fauci, if, if I could comment on him, in my opinion, this guy's a rat. And, and I've thought that from the moment that I've seen him on TV talking because I would notice how he would change his story up so many times and nobody really noticed it. And I, I have feeling like this guy is misleading Trump. Like he's not giving him the right uh, information. He's, he's playing Trump. And, it, you know, come to find out, this guy has been studying the AIDS virus for 30 years, right? And Dr. Fauci knows that there's HIV homology in this virus. Yeah. I, and you know, even though yeah. he knows that, right, even though he knows that and he has his advanced knowledge in, in, in viruses, in the very beginning, he's sitting there on TV saying, oh, yeah, you know, very, if you look back, oh, yeah, we don't have to worry about the virus. Don't worry about it. It's no, but see, he's saying this while he knows the homology of the virus, and he knows how it can mutate because he owns a patent on it. Yeah, so, I mean, he's so definitely complicit. Me, he's definitely complicit. Yeah, I mean, 
Okay, so in, in my mind, this is just my opinion, the WHO and the CDC, the whole time the situation has been occurring, they've been covering stuff up, and they've been, they've been putting out all this false information, and uh, they've been changing up the story, and I've been watching them the whole time. And, and you know, it kind of sickens me when I see people in the mainstream put so much faith in these scientists and these experts, and I'm looking at them like, are you guys serious? Like, are you listening and watching what these people are, have been doing from the gate? You know, from the gate, they have been dishonest. You know, from the gate. And, uh, you know, it's a combination it's of being dishonest and, and also incompetent, you know. I think there's, I don't think that they, they, you know, there's some things that they were doing that just due to incompetence. But I'll tell you, Fauci yeah. should. I don't understand why the news, you know, there's enough news out there in, in the alt media that's talked about the HIV homology. You know, and yeah, I am shocked don't. that yeah. they don't bring that up during the news conference in front of you. Fauci and say, what, hey, I Fauci, would, yeah. you know, what's going on with this HIV, you know, spike protein? Yeah, let, let me tell you, Paul. I went to the stores the other day, and you know, I feel real bad about the grocery, the grocery workers that are working at the registers and they're not wearing masks. They're not wearing gloves. I mean, there are some that are now. Now they have face shields that are covering the customers from the cash registers, which is smart. But I met this, you know, the other day I was at the store, and this older gentleman, he's doing the grocery stores, you know, sitting there. All these people are walking by. He's doing it all day. He has no gloves and no mask. And I told him, I said, hey, bro, you know, you should get a mask. You know, you got to get some gloves. You're here dealing with these people just for your health, you know. And uh, he, he just looked at me and said, nah, man, don't worry about it. I'll be all right. I'm, I'm healthy. And then I told him, I said, did you know that the, the COVID virus or the virus that causes COVID-19 actually has HIV homology on it? And when I said that, he looked at me like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, and then I kind of explained to him the things that I've heard you say and other people say and things I've read in articles. And the guy was blown away. And basically, he looked at me like I was crazy. And I walked away and he didn't believe what I said at all. You know, so there are a lot of people who don't know that this virus um, has that type of composition. You know, um, and that's being hidden from them. It's the mainstream that's hiding that information, you know, and which is sad. You know, because I, I still see a lot of people not taking it serious, you know, running around. Just, okay, so I, 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 I've been delivering food for Uber, and I've noticed that on a couple of deliveries that I go on, um, I'll be delivering a large amount of food, and it's people that are having parties at their house. You know, they're not social distancing, wow. and they're, they're, not, they're not taking it serious. So I'm, I'm carrying these bags, and I'm thinking, what the heck, like, like who's going to eat all this food? And then when I open the door, you know, when I go to drop the food off, I see a whole bunch of people hanging right out like it's no big deal. And it's because they don't know the homology of the virus. You know, they don't know the enemy. They, they think it's, they still think, they still have it in their mind. Oh, I'm healthy, I'll be okay, da 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 da. You know, and then these people are gonna go home to their families and stuff and they still have this, this nonchalant attitude about the virus. You know, so that, you know, I found that. You know, another thing I found disturbing too, the other day I went to the store, and this is kind of along the, the line that you guys were talking about how the, um, uh, how, how the SARS-2 virus can actually go into the central nervous system and work its way up to the brain and kind of work like ladies. I saw a lady at the store, right, walking her shopping cart out, she started coughing on her cart. She took out a tissue, blew her nose, and threw it in the car. And then jumped in her car, you know, after she got her groceries and drove away. And I was looking at her like, for real? Are you serious? And I actually went in and told the people that work in the store, I said, hey, whoever's pulling the car, see that car right there? I just saw this lady cough all over it, and that tissue that's in there, she blew her nose and threw it in there. So whoever's going to get the car, please be careful. Clean it off. Do what you got to do. You know, and I'm thinking, man, these people, you know, that, that theory that you guys have about it acting like rabies or mm -hmm. more, basically... Um, causing people to spit and cough or to become aggressive and do these things, kind of like Tourette's, mm -hmm. um, in order to infect other people. There's a lot of videos popping up like that, and uh, people are doing that. Um, and it could be, you know, maybe it, it is actually affecting people's uh, minds, kind of like uh, that disease that cats get out, I forget the name, um, and cause, you know, humans and, and whatever to do certain things. You know, that's definitely. That's and, and my thing is, with that, that starts to uh, mutate even more. Did you hear the story that came out of India about the guy who was infected and in quarantine? No. Okay, so so it's kind of scary, but apparently there was a man who was quarantined. Um, he had COVID nineteen, and apparently he, he 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 they said he didn't have no mental issues before. The guy escaped the quarantine because the authorities were actually forced the quarantine too. He escaped, right, and he ran into a random woman on the street, and he actually bit her to death. And when I saw that, I was like, "What the oh, heck?" Oh, is this the one? Oh no, I heard about the story. This is the one. I actually saw, I saw the video. Or the article, okay, the news yeah, article. Yeah. This is the one where the lady was sleeping out on her porch, right? And the guy yeah, bit, yeah, bit yeah, her yeah, neck, yeah. neck and killed her. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering, like, what if, what if the the that CNS aspect of it that you guys talk about, what if this thing keeps on mutating to the point where um, it turns into something like that? I mean, it goes from people spitting on things and coughing on people, right, and licking, you know, like the poles and the buses, which there's a whole bunch of videos of people doing weird stuff like that. What if it, it continues to mutate and it becomes, it starts to become people attacking other <laughs> I know that's way out in left field. No, no, I know, you're not that far off. I mean, it's like Donald the Dead, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like when you, when you look at this virus, you're like, okay, so, so this thing attacks the immune system, this thing goes into your, your CNS, uh, attacks the brain, it makes, might control people, make people do things. It also is leaving people sterile. Um, 
you know, it's getting into the blood, you know, it can get into wherever you have the ACE2 receptor, going into other receptors, and it's, you know, you got eight strains, and it's mutating, it's like, this thing is a horror show. Like, what in the world? You know, it's doing all this weird stuff. You just don't know which direction it's going to go. You know, and then if you got eight strains out there, you don't know which direction these strains are going to go. You know? Yeah. Um, it's it's a you know, weird... I, I, you know, it's... It's not going to be as bad as, let's say, going to the dead. We're going to be walking around, you know, eating each other's brains or anything like that. But, yeah, it, but yeah, the thing yeah. is, is that it is affecting the nervous system. And right. it, you know, and, it's a, and that, that nervous system that it's affecting is behavioral. Right. It's affecting right. our behaviors and, and being more aggressive. Now, we, yeah. have, you know, what would, what would be interesting to know is when it starts to mutate, does the, the aggressiveness get increased or does it go down? You know, and, and it, it right. loses this, this central nervous system because yeah. you know, my, yeah, my gut feeling is, is that it'll, it'll, yeah. it'll start to affect the immune system more than than the central nervous system. But I could be wrong. Well, well, let me go out in left field again, okay? So you've heard of predictive programs, mm -hmm. right, where um, there's another side of it, okay? You know, you know, you know they, I'm going to go in the left field, okay? Now, a lot of people believe that there's the Illuminati and that the Illuminati practice magic, right? Well, in magic, right, what, what, they, what they do is they, they'll create sigils, which are supposed to affect a person's subconscious. You put the idea into the subconscious so that when you get enough people... Um, with that message in the subconscious, it will affect reality and change reality, and that's like kind of like what they believe magic is. Um, so they use the subconscious in order to affect reality. Um, you know, because there are people who believe that your consciousness can affect uh, atoms and, and molecules and stuff like that. So that's the basic idea. So you know, on left field, right? You, you, we've had all these zombie movies that came out, The Walking Dead. Everybody was into zombies for a long time, for a couple of years. Now, what if these zombie movies were actually like a sigil, an idea that's planted into the subconscious of the masses? in order to make that thing come about. You know what I'm saying? Kind of gaining the energy from, this is kind of like the idea that, you know, well, certain occultists have. Yeah, you know, the, the makers of, like, Dawn of the Dead movies and stuff, it was really a yeah. commentary on on society. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. a horror film, you know, obviously, you know, it was a shock factor, it was yeah. a horror film, but, but it was a commentary. It was almost like a, a tongue-in-cheek kind of uh, parody of how people really are in, in this modern world, where they just, you know, true, go true. to work, you know, you know, mindless, and they go shopping mindlessly, and... You know, they live their, yeah, their, yeah, their life mindlessly, and, and, you know. So it was, it was yeah. almost like a joke at first. Um, yeah, in a way, but then when, when, you, when you step back and you realize that, that uh, Hollywood and TV and the media, like the media, the news, they get a script. They, they get, uh, I don't want to go too deep into it, but so the media, they will get talking points, and they follow these talking points. And basically, the media is used by certain powers to push out certain ideas, um, to push out a narrative. And you have a lot of scientists who understand how the mind works. They understand key words and things we use. And they're constantly using the media, books, movies. It's been happening for a long time. Like, um, you know, people can look this up. Um, so the media is used in order to put ideas into people's minds so that they move in a certain direction. Um, you also have that aspect, you know. And, and, and uh, the reason why I say that is because, you know, going out in left field, it could have been, you know, that narrative was put into the media if we're dealing with these type of occultists in order to bring about a reality that something that they wanted to create, you know what I'm saying? And that's just out in left field, but um, basically the media always has a narrative to push. Oh, they're definitely doing predictive programming, yeah. for sure. I agree with them. Yeah. What was interesting is that those zombie movies really came out in the 80s. It started in the 80s. Well, it really started, I think, yeah. in the early 70s. I think the very first Dawn of the Dead movie was like early 70s, but they really took off. The series really took off yeah. in the 80s, because I remember as, as, you know, being in elementary school, watching the Dawn of the Dead and all yeah. that, you know? So, yeah. but then, you know, the, the you TV know, I, series I came out with Wake Walking yeah. Dead. You know? Yeah, I think that... I think that there is a plan that's been going on for a long time, and I think that the end game, what's going to happen, is uh, we're going to head towards transhumanism. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, that the humans, that somebody is trying to change the nature of humans. Um, and I think uh, AI, transhumanism, all that's going to take a real, a real strong hold on the world and on society. And I think this virus is part of leading us in that direction. Um, you know, and, and you know, that's why all the 5G is going up, because in order for AI to, to be really efficient, it has to have a 5G. The 5G has to be up. That's going to bring it to the next level, you know. And so this 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 road that we've been on is is a plan that's unfolding. That's been in line for a long time, and it's just been taking taking steps little by little to bring us into a certain position or into a certain place. Are you um, for a certain reason. Are you familiar with Leap Project by Rex? Uh, you, you know what? I, I saw, yes, I saw a video of him. <laughs> he did a funny video right, right. where he put on like a dinosaur mask and he was dancing and he cracked me up. But I have seen some of his videos, yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm, we're trying to schedule something to talk about artificial intelligence and transhumanism. Where I'm, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll be the guest speaker and you know, and I'll be on the show. But we haven't, we haven't set a, set a date yet on when to do the recording. 
But uh, no, you know, my, you know, my, yeah. you know, my PhD and postdoctoral work was, you know, dealing with artificial intelligence. And I wrote a book uh, nice. about artificial intelligence and transhumanism. And, you know, the problem nice. is, is the problem with transhumanism and why, you know, humanism is better than transhumanism. So my, my argument well, is that the, humanism the title is better. Of the book? It, it's called artificial intelligence. You can get it on, okay, Amazon, nice. or on my website. But, but it's, you know, I go over and I analyze the key players of the singularity um, and, uh, you know, some of the authors that are, you know, pushing the transhumanist movement. And then I, I do a rebuttal. So I, oh, okay. so, okay. I, you know, so I, I, you know, try to persuade the reader that humanism is better than transhumanism. Yeah, you know, and I believe that also, you know, I mean, I, I think that no matter what technology you can create, okay, I think that humans, we have more power than we realize or that, than we know, you know, um, and I think that we will always, um, in our nature, have more potential than, than any type of computer or any type of robot. But I feel like right now there is a movement. Like even here in where I'm at in the Bay Area, you have uh, you have a church that uh, is dedicated to AI, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have all these techies who believe that um, it, the guy that used to work at Google, he's the one who started it, and they believe that that what they what they need to do is to create God, and that they believe that God is going to be an AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is, this comes yeah. this this comes from the writings by Dr. Chu, and Dr. Chu, uh-huh. you know, talks about Berkeley, this, right? Uh, yeah, he he um he he pushing this uh, uh, cosmic Buddha concept. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, yeah, this yeah, idea yeah. that you need a, you need a transhumanism that leads to post-humanism and everybody will be uploaded yeah. into a cloud and be, be yeah. angelic and never, you know, never die, you know. But I just, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, just I prefer Elon being Musk. human. I just prefer being human. Yeah, know. exactly. Me too. And then if you add Elon Musk, uh, uh, Neuralink. Neuralink, yeah. I did a video. I, I did a video uh, um, complaining about Neuralink. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, just imagine humans, like, in the future, um, connected to Neuralink. Probably with the with the you know when we get these vaccines, they're gonna force for the COVID. They're, they're gonna put a microchip in there, so and their reason is gonna be so that they can track humans and track outbreaks. Da da da. You know all this stuff. You know will probably be connected into the cloud, and maybe the cloud will be connected into you know just throwing it out in left field, maybe some type of quantum computer. You know, and then you'll the Earth you know becomes like a a, a a brain, and all the humans are like a blockchain, everything connected to this one quantum computer. You know, it's, it's, you know the direction we're going to going in is just a weird direction. I mean, all the stuff you see on the sci-fi movies, they're all doing it. They're, all of it, mm-hmm. you know. And, and as for this virus, it does make me think about the Georgia Guidestones, the depopulation. You know, I mean, in my opinion, this this, this, I, this yeah. depopulation, it, it can all it's all in line with the same plan and the same road that we're going down to change humanity. You know, into something different. Exactly. They're trying to roll our you civil know? liberties. They're trying to roll in artificial yeah. intelligence and transhumanism. Oh, that Paul, it's scary, man, because you know what? Not everybody is going to take that, that vaccine. There are people out there who will fight against that. I hope and so. if, oh, they will. There's, there's no way everyone is going to, there's people listening to, to the to show right now that will not accept that vaccine, and that's scary, because where is it going to lead to? Like, you know, if, there's people, there are people, I've run into people, I used to work with this guy, he was uh, a prepper, and he was, him and his friends were saving uh, weapons and they were they were ready to go all you have a lot of people out there like that who are going to fight and who will not give in to taking a vaccine and and it looks like because of how bad this virus is they are going to try to force vaccines on society and if you don't get that vaccine you know they're probably going to put a microchip in there and then gonna, it's going to be like the the new technology that apple's coming out with and bill gates where they're going to be able to see who's social uh distancing and where the outbreaks are how your health is you know they'll put that technology into the microchip you know and if you don't take this vaccine with the microchip and you can't be part of society you can't go to the store you know you can't be that social that. scoring yeah. It's the beginning of us accepting the social scoring. Let me tell you, Paul, 2020 has been a doozy. Like, there's some <laughs> so many weird, I mean, it's like we're living in some kind of movie. Like, all this crazy stuff is going on. And then you have the fact that China, India, and Russia, and a whole bunch of other uh, nations got together and they signed that paper and they publicly stated that they are not going to use the U.S. dollar anymore for trade. Mm-hmm. That this is what they're going to do. I mean, that opens up a whole nother can of worms. You know, you don't, you don't mess with America's money because if you mess with America's money, well, you know what happens. You know, so it's like, are we headed towards a, a war too? You know, I'm I mean, you got I, mean this, uh, I personally think that, have, I think that there's a move, you know, a, a war brewing between China and the United States in the Pacific Ocean in 2025. Well, check this out. So there's news coming out of China right now that foreigners, right, are not are be, are being kicked out of their homes. They're not allowed to buy at the stores. They're not allowed to ride the buses. Right now, in China, it's going on. Um, and I was thinking, you know what? This might be a ruse to kick all the foreigners out of their country without vocally telling them to leave because there might be a war. Mm-hmm. So you, you kick them all out of their houses, they can't buy, you know, but you don't tell them directly, they're gonna end up all leaving and going home to their own nations because they don't have a choice. I mean, you can't shop, you gotta eat, you know, and maybe, you know, it's like there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that uh, a lot of stuff developing. Um, 
you know, and it's, it's uh, some weird like, you know, and today, um, so there, there, there's a gentleman that lives in China, um, and he's making videos, and according to him, they're already having outbreaks. So so they just ended their uh, their lockdown, and they, they proclaim that they conquered this virus, right? But already, within a couple of days, they're already having outbreaks in certain cities. And so they don't have control of the virus. Exactly. You know, um, this is proof that there's a second out. wave and reinfection. Yeah, and you know, I'm looking at I'm looking at that, and I'm like, if China, you know, they can't control this thing, how are we over here in the U.S. going to go? You know, Trump wants to put people to work. How are we going to control it? You know, I mean, there's no cure. I mean, unless I mean, you know what? They might already have a cure. You know, if they if someone designed it, they might have had a cure before it got out. Just say maybe. Um, See, I, I think they got out before. Pushed. I think it got out before they could make the antidote. I don't think yeah, they got that's possible. Yeah, yeah, and which is which is kind of crazy. It's like because you know what? The way I look at it, Paul, inevitably everyone's gonna catch it because you know some even form if you're a social creature, some, some form of it, some mutation form of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inevitably, I mean, it's 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 something that you bring. You know what? I was I got into so you know what? Like even in my family, there are I have family members who are grown enough to know that you cover your mouth when you cough, and I had to fight them for weeks to to get them to cover their mouth when they're speaking to my 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 95 year old grandmother. You know, I had to I had to argue with them for weeks to get them to wear masks and to get them to wear gloves when they go and visit my grandmother. And there are there are people that just don't take the virus serious, and it just it's it's just you know that's getting spread. You know, and over here in the Bay, okay, there's an Air Force base, Air Force base, and I have a friend that goes on the base and he told me that that place is that the military is showing up everywhere over there, and they're gonna they're gonna pan through the Bay Area, and you know the 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 narrative is that they're gonna help all the hospitals, you know, to to. To, take, to, to be able to handle this COVID-19, right? Like, mm-hmm. But it's like, is that really why they're coming out here? You know? oh, yeah, and then yeah. in San Francisco, they're boarding up all the stores, all the windows and everything. Well, like, I think like, they're afraid they of mass riots. I think they're afraid yeah. of mass riots if they, when they start doing the forced vaccination. But if they were if they were so yeah. kind and gentle, why are they giving the police officers, the police departments, these drones? You know, yeah. That's so robot. Yeah. You know, I just, it's, I'm so tired of the, the, you know, these... You know, it's funny because all of this stuff we saw on science Sci- sci-fi movies in the past, yeah. drones flying around, yeah. talking, and you know all the everything that you've seen on a sci-fi movie, right? They're, they're coming out with. They're, they're start everything you've seen. They're creating it. It's already been created. You know the same thing with the, you know we're talking about the predictive program. You know all that stuff is coming out in technology. You know, um, so you know we live in interesting times, man. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how things pan out. You know, um, so another thing that concerned about me concerned me is uh, there was a, a thing on the news where there's certain states that are stopping people from buying seats. You know, and my big thing is look if you're out there and you're listening, go buy seeds right now and go start a farm in your backyard. Do not depend on the government. Do not depend on the store to, to feed you in the coming months. You know, you better prepare right now. Get some chickens, put them in the backyard. Yeah, some rabbits, you know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are starting that. You know, I, I have a friend that, yeah. you know, that I interviewed on this channel and, you know, um, she's doing that too. You know, there's others that are green grass, yeah, smart. green That's grass, smart. Is, you know, pushing, you know, the micro green type stuff and making sure that you, you know, yeah. plant uh, Oppenheimer Ranch is yeah. really pushing that idea of the permaculture. The problem comes yeah, with yeah. You know, people that are like in in New York City. You, you can't really do that. You don't have the land yeah, to do it. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, <clears throat> I'm really scared for you guys over there. Oh, I'm scared I'm, too. <laughs> yeah, man. Because uh, you guys, yeah, man. Uh, I'm looking at New York and I'm just like, wow. Okay, you know, like, I wish you guys the best. Uh, definitely have an exit strategy. You might need one. You might need to go to a, a nice area. I know on the outskirts of New York, you guys have open land and stuff like that. You might have a couple friends. Yeah, I mean, like upstate New York, you know, has you know land. So yeah, yeah. Like, you know, up, you know, up, you know, upstate uh, like Connecticut, you know, out in Pennsylvania. Yeah. You know, so you know, maybe have some kind of plan. Have some type of plan where if you need to just bounce quick, you know, because you never know from one day to the next, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, yeah, I know. And I you have to bounce quick. Yeah, you know, the thing is, it's like I keep on, I keep on thinking about 9/11, right? And there right. were some people that ran away, and there were some people that that walked too. And the ones that I walk too, that. you know, I right. that. yeah, you know, and I just like my personality is I'm gonna walk into the fighter. I'm gonna walk. I'm not gonna run away. From yeah. You. you know, I can tell you're a fighter, Paul, just by how you you, you let Jason do it to know. You know, you're like, look, you might be from New York, but if you punch me, I will punch you back harder. <laughs> right. Right. And that's good, you know. But you know what? Yeah, it's good to be a fighter, but it's also always have an exit strategy. You know, um, that's just my opinion. You know, definitely fight, but you always want to have a uh, you always want to have a plan A, plan B, and a plan C. You know. Because um, you might have to duck down and come back and fight another day, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, I, I wish you guys the best out there. I hope you guys the best. Uh, you know. And, oh, and I remember you said in one of your videos that you you have um, somebody in your complex that has COVID nineteen, correct? Yeah, yeah. But we don't know which. Um, we have one one person that was co- that confirmed with COVID nineteen in the building. Okay, so I, w- I was thinking you might want to. I don't, you know, I'm not a scientist or nothing, but you might want to duct tape your uh, your vents, you know, because just like on those boats, um, how it spreads so fast. 
um, on the boats through the ventilation system. You never know. And then, you know, like over here in California, my friend, his girlfriend uh, was at old folks' home. And uh, it's a kind of a crazy situation. They brought somebody to the old folks' home that was infected with COVID, and they didn't tell anybody. And then what happened was everybody got infected. And so they had to shut down the old folks' home, and she got infected. And now she's in quarantine. And it just it spreads from room to room, you know, through the vents and stuff. So it's like you might want to, I don't know, maybe duct tape your vents um, to make sure that, you know, if you're living and there's people on top of you and below you and this stuff can go through the ventilation system, then maybe it's a good idea to, to cut off those vents so that, you know, those particles can't come into where you're at. You know, um, yeah, man. I know the breed too. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah, well, you know, if, um, I don't know how, how the air is in New York, but maybe you can just open up the door. Actually, the air is a lot better now because the, the, the traffic is almost zero on the streets. Yeah. And the air, yeah. they don't have all the particulates anymore. So the air is so yeah. clear. You know what? There's a bunch of stories kind of along that line with, um, like, lakes in certain areas that are, are, are getting all cleaned up because there's no people or pollution in certain cities that are disappearing because less people are using you know, automobiles and stuff like that, you know, which, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, we've seen that we do cause a lot of destruction on Earth, you know, I have to admit, um, you know, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, so, yeah, but, but, uh, yeah, yeah, you still there, Paul? Yeah, no, I listen. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, but yeah, man, uh, you know, I really appreciate the work that you're doing, um, you know, thank you for, uh, for, for bringing all this knowledge and awareness to us and letting us know what's going on. Um, I will say that, that people like you, videos like you, I mean, there's a number of you guys that I listen to, um, different perspectives. Um, Which ones do you, you listen know, to? I, so I listen to you. I listen, I listen to Shrimp Zoo, too. I like that guy. Mm -hmm. um, hope he gets better. Um, I listen to Peak Prosperity. Um, I listen to uh, uh, George Webb. Um, who else? Uh, I think that's pretty much my goal. Have, have you been listening, listening to John Campbell? Uh, oh, yeah, I do listen to John Campbell. I do listen to John Campbell. I'm sorry. I like John Campbell, too. He's a very smart guy. I like how he draws things out and explains things in, in such a good way. You know, you know, so I listen to people at different levels of the spectrum. Like, John Campbell is my is more of my uh, my calm, mostly facts, and a lot of interesting detail and education kind of level. Um, and, and, and I also listen to, uh, uh, what is that called? Agenda Free TV, that guy. He, he's my, like, news guy that I can hear different stuff that's going on. And then when you go more into the more edgy situation, I start listening to you. And, uh, you know, like Peak Prosperity and uh, George Webb, you know, so I got a few of my go-tos on all different levels. And then, you know, I just kind of put it all together. And then, you know. Uh, are you familiar you know. with the Addy Ads uh, uh, roundtable that we're doing weekly on Saturday night? You know, I did see. <laughs> so, so last night I was, I was running through videos and I saw that one where you guys were, were talking to that guy that was saying that there's no such thing as viruses. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we, that was no, our second I, episode. I, I, I gotta tell you, man, I was, it was like comedy watching you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like watching watching your faces. And, but, but I will tell you though, I'm not judging the guy because to be honest, I'll be the first one to tell you that that, that I, I know about myself that sometimes there's things that I think I know and then I realize that I really didn't know. So, so, I, so personally, I believe that there's viruses, but I'm not gonna judge that guy and, and say, oh, he's totally wrong because I, I could be wrong, I don't know. You never know, so I'll, I'll give it here. But then on the other hand, I feel like there's some kind of psyop going on because he's not the only person who's coming out and saying this. Right. There's other people that are popping up, right. that seem educated, and they're they're speaking that same that same spiel. Right. And it's I'm almost like, like scripted. Is some kind of yeah, flat it, earth psyop? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm you thinking. Know? I'm thinking it's scripted. It's, it's, it's supposed to divide the truth community. It, 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 it's starting to pop up. I mean, you've probably heard of the term muddying the waters, right? So whenever whenever you're dealing with, uh, hello? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. Whenever you're dealing with intelligence, yeah, whenever you're dealing with intelligence, right, um, what happens is if you want to hide information, one of the tactics that you use is you put out a whole bunch of, of disinformation so that the people who are looking at the information get confused about what the real information is. And it can also discredit the true community because other people will look at it and say, you guys don't believe in viruses? You guys are nuts, you know, and it, it, it puts a bad name. So, so it could be, you know, it could be a psyop. Yeah, I, you know? I think that Dr. Kaufman, uh, you know, where he's talking about exosomes being viruses and viruses really don't exist and all this stuff. Yeah. I think he's a psyop. He you might know, be. You know, I just, no, I just don't, I just, there's something about him that I just don't trust. And he's a psychiatrist. Yeah. And so he knows about right. know, the psychology and the way the brain works with fear and all that. So it wouldn't surprise me that yeah. he's, you know, it's a psyop. And then they launch, yeah, you know, he possible. launches himself on, on, on Richie from Boston. Yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, wow. Um, it's like, yeah. You can't launch it in yeah. any other, you know, crazy, crazy flat earth channels yeah. from Boston. But, 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 but let me tell you, you know what? I, yeah, so I'm pretty open minded and I don't like to judge people. So I'll listen to what they say and they do have a lot of good points at, at certain levels. Um, you just got to know how to decipher what, what's credible and what you might not think is credible and be able to put the right information together. You got to be able to use your discernment. 
you know. Um, but what, what, what is expert. interesting, what is interesting, what Dr. Kaufman mentioned and the, the guest that was on the round table on Saturday with Patty, um, yeah. is that inflammation can yeah. release uh, a cytokine storm. You know, and that, yeah. part of that part of that mechanism is these exosomes and the release yeah. of other Golgi vesicles that, um, right. you know, try to, you know, fight the infection. But if you have mm-hmm. overproduction of these things, you may lead to ARDS. Which is this respiratory yeah, infection? Yeah. So, yeah, but you know, that part, they, uh-huh. that part, they get right. But the, the part they get wrong yeah. is, is that they're saying that there's no viral infection. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, I mean, if you think about when we were little kids, right? And you got a cold, and then your friend caught the cold, right? Right. right. You, you pretty much know, okay, you're spreading something to this person. Exactly. Exactly. And he's saying, uh, like, he's saying that that stuff doesn't exist. That it's it's all right. internal. It's all internally done. Right. And, you know, how do you explain right. the genome sequencing? If this was a random event. Right. You know, it, it, the uh-huh. genomes would be so randomized that, that, you, it, that every time you, you, you did a sampling, you would get garbage. So there's no way yeah, that he's saying this is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, that's the thing that got to me. When that, when that gentleman in India came out with that paper and all of these scientists uh, jumped on him mm-hmm. and made him take his paper back, mm-hmm. you know, now it's coming out little by little that that guy was on point. Oh, absolutely. I think they scared him. No, it, they scared him because right. you got to remember that these, these researchers, they depend on funding to maintain the right. lab and, and, and to be right. able to promote their research. So yeah, if they if they were scared if they were scared uh, to, to you know to um, you know pull the paper or they don't you know or they don't get the funding then obviously they're gonna pull the paper. Oh yeah, yeah, and you know whenever I listen to institutionalized science, I always have that in the back of my mind. They're getting paid, and and uh, that money can affect the information that they give oh, or they don't give and influence. You know, and so I always have that in mind. But to me, just like what you're saying, I mean, you got those four inserts. Those four inserts have all of this information that works together to create a function that happens to work together with the other functions that on the, on the spike protein that make it, and it all goes together together to make it a thousand more times more infectious than SARS. SARS. And HIV, the HIV homology, HIV is a retrovirus, which is a completely different virus from the SARS virus, and somehow it ended up on a cold virus, right. Right. you know? Exactly. And to me, it's like, that, that doesn't make sense. <coughs> you know, it, 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 it doesn't make sense that it happened randomly. You know, mutations don't happen like that. You know, if they're random, they don't affect the function. You know, if it's forced, um, you know, it had to be forced. To have if, a, if it was a, only one, yeah, if it was only one insert and it didn't, you know, uh-huh. have all these other added components to the spike protein right. and the replicase, then you could say it was genetic. Right. But when you add up yeah. a, a supercharged replicase and a supercharged, you know, spike protein and four HIV homologies inserted, there's no way that that came out genetically. And not only that, we have papers totally that we can go to that show how they made it in 2008. I totally agree. You know, so yeah. it's just it's a, it, what it is. It's a cover up, so people can't blame the yeah. P4 lab that they leaked out a weapon. Yeah, you know, the way I look at it is like this. Let's say you have a robot, right? And this robot is, is programmed to vacuum your, your living room. That's the only program it has, and that's what it does. And one day you wake up, and this robot pro- vacuums your living room, and then cooks you some eggs, and then goes shopping, and then goes and picks you up some grocery and comes back home. And you're looking at it like, what the heck? So you look at the program, and in that program, you find this whole set of other programs giving it all these hundreds of directions for it to do what it just did. Are you going to sit there and say, oh, this was random? Right, exactly. No, 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 that's exactly and, and, right. Yeah, so right. it's like, it's the, the, it's so complicated what it does um, in order to attach itself to ourselves and, and the way it hides, right, and how it folds and all that. It's so complicated. And all those inserts work together to accomplish that task. It's like, and it's a retro, it's, it's like something on a retrovirus that you find on a cold virus. It's like, there, there's no way it was random. It had to be pressured somehow, you know? Mm-hmm. And, then, and then you have all this other stuff the virus is doing. It makes me wonder, like, does it have, like, like rabies homology? Does it have... Does it have other types of homology for different types of viruses that maybe someone hasn't discovered yet? That's a great point. Wait a That's a great point. It's very hard to find mm-hmm. stuff like that. If it wasn't for yeah, the Indian paper, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for the Indian paper, it would have been hard to to search for. Right. You wouldn't even know to look. I mean, but right. you know, and that's, right. that, I'll tell you, that paper is such an important paper to inform the public that this paper. virus can gain function and end up yeah. with the possibility of, of forming an AIDS-like situation. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. But there's been yeah, so many would, people would, that have downloaded the paper and put it on separate servers that the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, sooner or later, they're going to have to change the narrative somewhere and say that it was created and they'll just blame it on someone. You know, and then, you know, China will say it was the U.S., U.S. will say it was China. Well, the reality and, uh, is it's both. Say, I think the reality is it's both. Yeah. You well, know, people did part of it, and, and, and then yeah. P4, the P4 lab at Wuhan, you know, added, added uh, functions. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, that's what it sounds like, man. This virus is weird, man. It's crazy. It's like the stuff that it's doing. We, we probably don't even know half the stuff that it can do or that it's doing. I mean, it's like we're just it's just coming out little by little, and then when you hear it, you're like, wow. But all the stuff that you predicted and these other guys predicted, you guys are all on point because you would say stuff, and it would come out later, mm-hmm. you know? And, 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 you know, what you said was, was, was on point, you know? Um, now, the next, the, 
but uh, the next coronation on the internet is to start exposing Tedros and Fauci, and it's and understand yeah. and try to inform the public with the vast knowledge yeah. that George Webb has to try to yeah. explain what was going on at Fort Beecher. Yeah, 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 man. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens. I, I don't know, man. That's you know, uh, that's some uh, scary territory right there. You know, we're dealing with uh, with uh, some powerful forces. You know, um, yeah, yeah, and uh, it's very interesting times that we that we're in. You know, um, well, we got we're, we're, we're on the battlefield. You know, we're all on the battlefield, and we have to, you know, work together yeah. and, and, and and inform our politicians that we want to go back to a pre nine eleven day where we don't have the surveillance state anymore and forced vaccinations and social scoring and E seven yeah. and all this stuff. I mean, we, I, you know, we yeah. need, yeah. you know, we need to go back to a simpler time. It doesn't mean we don't that, that we yeah. can't have technology. We can still have technology, but I don't want right, technology right. where it's controlling my life. I want to control right, technology. Right. I want to be able to yeah. opt out. And, you know, I just, it, yeah. Yeah, you know, all, all our information is already stored and categorized. Um, they've been doing it for a long time. You know, all the apps that we have on the phone, they take our information and, and you know, all of these different Facebook and, you know, I, you know, I, I do it Uber, I talk to different people out here in the Bay Silicon Valley and you, you hear about things that different companies are already doing. Um, and it's like, you know, it's, it's, we're, we're pretty much in the surveillance state. And it's, it, they're just trying to push it a little bit more. Well, they're going to push it more, more and more. To the point where the only way out is you have to pull it down. We're getting yeah, to the point that once, they, once you can't opt out, let's say they do decashing, yeah. all your money's in the bank, you can never get it out. Once they yeah. put 5G in, they're going yeah. to, you won't be able to opt out of the technology because there'll be facial recognition yeah. everywhere in your society. The only yeah. way to get out of that yeah. is to destroy it, to, 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 yeah. to yeah. You know, create a riot and destroy the technology. Yeah, that's why we live in scary times. So they're definitely, decashing is definitely in the books. I mean, it's inevitable that they will try to push a digital currency. Right. I mean, and once you know, they do a digital currency, then they can control you more. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I mean, if, if they do, I mean, there are articles saying that they want to put that microchip in the in the vaccine, you know, that comes out for this this virus right. because it's going to help to track it. And, you know, yeah. so it's like, you know what I'm saying? They're going to start with uh, microchips in us, you know. Um, you know, so because of my, you know, because, then, of my then, because of my, you know, and then, go ahead. The, the MR, uh, the messenger RNA uh, vaccine, like you were saying, should, they could put a, you don't know what kind of codes they could put in that thing that yeah. can change our own genetics, you know, they can do whatever they want. Exactly. You know, and then we're just supposed to allow them to put that in our bodies. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're talking about about giving them the ability to change the human nature, the human itself at a genetic level. You know, I mean, do you, I mean, are we really supposed to give these people that much power? You know, well, we're gonna, I mean, that's, I, that's I, kind of scary. I mean, we can't because what will happen is, is that right. our children and our children's children will, will be living a never ending tyranny. Yeah, I mean, you know what, they can do something to the virus and our children will become like Oompa Loompas. <laughs> they can do that. You know, they can do something to the, the, the that RNA that they, they all they got to do is put a code in there, and they our children could become like a slave race or something. You know, uh, with with lowered IQ, whatever. Well, you want. they did that with the TV. <laughs> oh, right. You know, they didn't need, they didn't right. need chip, chips and vaccines to do that. They, they did it with the TV. Yeah. yeah. But I definitely think there's an agenda and there's a roadmap, and we're all being led into a specific position in a in a in a specific place <coughs> where society they want society to be shaped in a certain way. And I think it does all tie into transhumanism, and uh, I think it ties into like a, uh, you know, the um, what is it called? Like, like, like a D-wave, the quantum computer. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, it, it all ties in. You know, um, and it's it's, it's, uh, it's pretty weird, man. Pretty weird. But uh, you know, I think the virus. I think the virus has has. You know, there's nothing out there that a man can create that doesn't have weaknesses. Well, so exactly. we just have to find the Achilles heel. That's right. We have to find the Achilles yeah. And it'll probably be a combination of things, you know, and, 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 and you know, nutrition, you know, you can attack its structure, you know, there, maybe there's different ways of attacking the structures and you can attack its ability to replicate, um, you know, and, and you know, uh, they, you know, just come at it from different directions. And, you know, people just got to kind of, I, I, you know, in my opinion, think outside of the box and look into different things uh, because there's always an answer out there. You can always, you know, there's, there's nothing that a man can go at you that another man cannot defeat. There's always a weakness, you know, and most likely that weakness will be outside the box a little bit outside of the box and, you know, probably be in a combination of different ways. Uh, but I mean, even, you know, even uh, there was a paper that, that was by the WHO that said that the structure of the, the, the this virus is affected at 56 degrees Celsius, right? So, you know, even with that knowledge, you know, with a little bit of heat, you know, you can affect the, the structure of this virus. Um, so there's, you know, a combination of things that you can throw at it. But, um, but yeah, man, we're, we're, we're in just strange times, man. And, and, yeah, and that, the herbs and stuff that you mentioned, you know, the uh, licorice root, mm -hmm. the licorice and the... Uh, uh, what's it called? Was uh, the Forskolone, Forskolone, the yeah. Lora, the Calendula extract, yeah. um, licorice root yeah. extract, and uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, rosemary. 
is important also. Yeah, yeah. Even um, you know, even make, mimicking uh, calorically, right? So it uses uh, quinine to make the cell permeable, and then and then and then uh, then they then they go in the zinc. So the zinc goes into the cell, mm-hmm. so it, it 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 stops the replication process of the virus. I mean, you can um, you can buy quinine and oranges, you know, um, or grapefruit. You know, and go with some zinc or copper. Copper does the same thing, but you got to be careful with copper because you don't want to overdose on it. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, it goes back to that idea, you know, you know, have enough fruits and vegetables. You know, if you eat a proper diet, you're, you're going to have those compounds yeah. that naturally help fight um, yeah. pathogens. Yeah, so, you know, so even the Bible, like I believe the Bible, right? And, um, you know, God said to Adam and Eve, I give you these plants and trees for medicine. Right. You know, and so the plants and the trees, they have medicines, they have compounds um, that are in there. Um, and you can increase the power of those compounds by using other compounds, you know, the intensity of those compounds. Um, you just gotta look into it and figure out how to do that, you know. But all these plants and and and, and herbs and, and vegetables, there's so much uh, data and information in these things to overcome whatever uh, whatever synthetic weapon that a human can throw at you to attack you. The plants and the herbs, there's a combination that can overcome that. Absolutely, you know. Yeah. A big yeah. a big proponent of that uh, that really promotes this this concept is Dr. Group. Dr. Group is okay. amazing. He's a, he's a, he's in my mind a genius in terms of you know. Uh, Nutraceuticals and and, and, and uh, natural healing. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it, it's good for people to look into that and try to figure out, you know, how to how to protect themselves and their families. You know, right. but uh, but yeah, man, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm in for the ride though. I watch all your all your uh your shows, Paul. Um, okay. you know, I keep up with the and I, I watch the roundtables. They're very uh they're very uh, informative. You know, and I hope you guys keep that. And you know what, you and, and George Webb, man, you guys are you guys are gonna make an awesome uh awesome team i hope so you know, I, think, I think so too oh, yeah. i think so too you know it just um you know just there's just so much to this i mean it just it, this thing is so deep and, and you know it goes right up to that whole new world order thing that uh yeah it, it's getting a little yeah. scary you know on a personal level i mean i've been threatened you know and and you know and, uh, at, at different levels and you know, I, just, yeah. I just i gotta be careful but i also I, i'm a yeah. I'm, I'm a person that just doesn't give up right right yeah i hear you man yeah yeah but yeah i definitely look forward to you guys talking you guys have different parts of the puzzle you know um everybody looks at things from a different perspective and uh when you when you get people together you get the different parts of the puzzle piece come together even more and come together come together even better you know what i'm saying right. so you know that's that that's going to definitely be a plus so but yeah 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 good deal good deal so i'm gonna i'm gonna get yeah. down here right? it's time for me to get some sleep and and uh you know i gotta be prepared for my my recording with, with george webb Okay, I'm gonna definitely watch that, man. I, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna film we're gonna film at 11 a.m. I don't know. How- after I did some postdoctoral work in artificial intelligence, uh, dealing with cortical and subcortical computing, uh, training uh, unassistedly uh, an AI on how to trade financial markets, and also doing some stuff in, in what is called topographical finance, looking at the, the financial markets in three dimensions and, and right. showing sure. a, a typology. So it was a software that was developed, um, and I stopped the development of that. But then I decided, the because of what happened to my brother, that I would pursue a, a pre-med education at Fordham University in, in New York. And at the same time, pursue a master's at Harvard University in biology. And then the whole idea was after that to go to medical school. I wanted to be a, a what is called a cardiothoracic surgeon to help people that have pulmonary and, and, sure. and, and heart diseases. So uh, that, that's kind of like my trajectory and my education. I guess uh, that are engineering certificates from MIT. So I have a lot of eclectic background. I, you know, that's what's called a polymath in a, in a systems approach, very similar to Dr. Shu. Yeah, and Dr. Sheen has mentioned uh, numerous times as well that, that he likes to look at it, obviously, from a systems perspective and, and appreciates the fact, even I think he's mentioned yourself as well, coming at it from different angles rather than, you know, your traditional medical tunnel vision, this is what we're dealing with, right? Um, so, and I appreciate that. So, Paul, do us a favor, and I mean, there's so much contradictory uh, information out there and, and messaging, of course, you have the mainstream message, which we'll get into, but tell us what what we're dealing with. Are we dealing with a virus? Are we dealing with some sort of other bug that's been built onto this virus are we like what exactly are we dealing with um so, so we can sort of wrap our head around it and understanding that most of us aren't you know phds in biology all right well there are things called pathogens and and they could be classified as um, bacterial fungal uh, viral 
and or we can get even more complex but we won't go down that road i mean mm -hmm. pre on you know like mad cow disease kind of stuff but mm -hmm. but um there's pathogens right and people can contract those in this particular case what we call covid 19 disease mm -hmm. a pathogen called sars cov 2 which is a sars virus it's a coronavirus a beta coronavirus that um causes a lot of damage to, to the human body especially the lungs so we are dealing with in this crisis a a pathogen that is that is called a virus is it uh natural or do you believe this one is engineered i believe it was bioengineered and it bifurcated around 2015 into a weapons program. And so, so, you're, you're, so, so it, it's important for people to understand that there, yeah. you can bioengineer something in the laboratory for scientific purposes, to understand the biology, to come up with therapeutics, to, you know, for diseases. That's a standard thing that's been going on for millennia, right? right. In, in, this, in, in, in biology. But you can also take that information and weaponize it. And there's strong evidence that a program, a parallel program started around 2015 for um, a weapons program. Off of, the, off of the scientific line, you have what I call the scientific line, bioengineered scientific line, and then it bifurcated, it, it spun off, and in parallel uh, had a weapons component to it. Uh, that so you know you have the weapon, the weapons, bioengineered line, and you have the scientific bioengineered line. But for sure, it was bioengineered. And I go in detail in my on my channel and have the PDFs to prove it on my website that it was bioengineered. And, and bioengineered specifically as a weapon. At first, it was bioengineered for scientific purposes. Then, okay. once they realized the virulence and the, and, and the, the weapon capability of the scientific line, they started enhancing it for for a weapons program. So it wasn't uh, a bat in the wet market, and I don't believe that story either. I think a lot of the mainstream is still going with that line, um, unfortunately. I don't know if you're familiar with George Webb and, and some of the things that he's talking about in regards to this. I, I am familiar. I don't know him personally. We're just starting to communicate behind behind the scenes. I actually talked to a lot of people behind the scenes. I bet you did. And, and you know, so I get you know inside information I can't share, and I get inside information I can't share. Um, you know, some of it is because of HIPAA. You know, HIPAA laws is like you know, I get CT scans and, and and you know information about patients that I can't share. So there's a, there's a knowledge that I have that I try right. to dissect and package for the masses to get around the hip issue. <gasps> but um, I have been talking to George Webb. We're, we're going to actually do what a filming it? on my channel uh, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I think we start filming at 11. No, absolutely not. Is that live? No, we're going to record it and then I'm going to it. And I'm also uh, talking to uh, Farmer Jones. So, he, you know, both of them, you know, they, 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 you know, they, they tackle the issue differently. You know, Farmer Jones, I think, is a little more on the sovereignty side, the, 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 the uh, civil liberty side. You know, that's the, the spin that I'm having with him. And uh, George, when we have our conversation, is going to be trying to I want to, I'm going to take it as an opportunity to get educated, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to view him as the professor. Mm -hmm. And he has a great amount of knowledge about who the players were and when. Yeah. And yeah. he's been doing this for years. So, I mean, he, he has in-depth knowledge. So, I'm going to use that opportunity as, you know, the student listening to the professor. Mm -hmm. And he's the professor. And I'm going to, the idea is to, to get a baseline yeah. of knowledge for everyone that's listening. Similar to what we just did with Stephen Mellon. Right. We got a baseline of knowledge of what the CCP did. Now, I want to work with George Webb. What's the baseline of all this information he has in his head? We're trying to distill it, literally keep the most important pieces that everyone needs to know to be able to start building and get caught up with right. ideas. You know, right. he's, he's at the PhD level about right. this, you know, who the key players are and, you know, how it's being developed. And, um, you know, but we have, to, we, have, we have to normalize. We have to get everyone to normalize to a certain level of understanding. Well, and that's everyone it. can start building and, 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 exactly. and be at the same case. Uh, well, that's the challenge that we have when we're doing these things, you know, for the public. I mean, I mean the only reason my channel exists is so I can educate people. And my focus, my channel, is, is all to do with uh, the UN, the globalists, uh, their agenda, sustainable development agenda, how it affects Canada and how it's been affecting Canada for a long. So that's my whole focus. And even in that realm, I have to be, you know, as long as my channel's been around, it's only been a couple of years, you know, I still have to remember that there's new people coming in and we have to we have to keep it at that level that they can receive it because if you go too much with, with too much information, they'll shut down, right? And and, and then you, you struggle to, to expand this equitable. But I, I find George is, I mean, he's incredibly intelligent and, this, and the amount of information that comes off his, his lips from his brain is, is amazing. And the names that he remembers and how they're all connected. But for our purposes, George Webb talked about, <clears throat> You know, this sort of originated in the states of Fort Detrick, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And and so then somehow from there it, it moved to to Wu and and then is that what you gather from George? What I want to dissect, I want to dissect how he got there, and yeah. where are we going? Right. Because my big concern, and I stated this early on on my channel, when I started covering COVID, you know, COVID nineteen at that time was just <laughs> um, uh, how is it going? to play out with the Biopatriot Act. I mean, you're familiar with this term that I've been using, right? Okay, so, mm -hmm. so individuals need to understand that this is very similar to 9-11. After 9-11, the Patriot Act came out and eroded our civil liberties, and it never rolled back after we killed bad guys in the Middle East. Right. And you just have this never-ending tyranny. We have police officers that have you know, military-grade weapons. We have a, a, a many uh, uh, municipalities uh, buying for their police department drones, and it's just a, a ramp up to 1984, which is yeah. a never-ending surveillance thing. And then once we have 5G, you can't opt out. See, right. the, way this work, the, way, the way 4G works is it's on this. It's mm -hmm. on our devices. 5G opens up the platform. You don't need these devices because they got cameras all over the place and they just recognize your face. Right. So you can't opt out of that unless you blow it up. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, we, we need to wake up and, and see that th this, the Patriot Act, part two, is 
this devastating thing that's happening biologically with SARS-CoV-2 and what it's causing, it's causing huge economic damage. And there's an incentive for the government to say, you got to take the vaccines, you're going to have to do your decaching, you're going to have to, you know, you got to make sure that, you know, every year you get a COVID-19, you know, a COVID-19 and a COVID-20 and a COVID-21 and yeah, COVID-21 you know, it vaccine, it never ends. And then you add in the 5G problems uh, right. and, and overall surveillance and, the, and police forces that have military-grade equipment. Yeah. Well, you need, the, the way our constitution was written for the Second Amendment, it is showing um, uh, symmetry. What I mean by that is, is that the people have weapons and the government has weapons, all right? But there's a symmetry to prevent tyranny. Right. When the government has more weapons or more powerful weapons than the citizenry, they have asymmetry and then more chance of tyranny. And right. that is the problem. And it's not just about bearing arms, which is supposed to be, you know, our right shall never be infringed. It states that, that that right should not be infringed. And it's very clear what that means. You can't right. take that, you can't nullify it, you can't take it away. That's what that right. means. So, so but the, the problem is, is that the, the government is just keeps on ballooning out the, 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 that, that military-grade equipment with the police officers, and our tax dollars are paying for their pension. Our tax dollars pays for all that stuff. So why are we paying for never-ending tyranny? They didn't ask for us. They didn't ask. Yeah. So, I'm, you know, going back to George Webb, he has an amazing amount of knowledge, but it's a big piece of the Biopatriot Act, of them controlling us and taking away our civil liberties. So I'm trying to zoom out and say, hey, guys, this is 9-11 all over again, but it's slow-mo. It's slow-mo. Well, and that's, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, when I'm watching and I'm seeing some of the consequences to some of the conditions that have been placed on Americans, when I'm watching from Canada, you know, I, I've said numerous times and I will probably continue to say numerous times, you know, thank God Americans have a constitution with inalienable rights. But even about, even those rights now are being trampled on uh, from what I'm seeing. And then from a Canadian perspective, we don't have those inalienable rights. We have rights that have been given to us by our masters, essentially, right? Like we have a charter of rights and freedoms, but the government created those for us, right? So they can, whatever they create, they can take away. So uh, as relative to this, and you're right, it's, it's big picture. And for me, it is big picture because so many people are focused just on the, on, on the virus, just on the pandemic. But very few people understand the bigger picture and how that this pandemic has been. Now, again, I sort of jumped from a pandemic to, you know, a, a pandemic that has been taken advantage of by the globalists because it, I mean, it all runs simultaneous with, with most of the 17 goals of sustainable development. And, and when you see all of the things they want to achieve in those goals, and I, I call it, you know, a pretty version of the Communist Manifesto because that's really what it is. You have the 17 goals, 169 targets. And then when you see all of the things that they're using through this pandemic to achieve, to follow up in achieving all of these goals, and I mean, vaccines is one of them. Healthcare is a huge element to sustainable development. Uh, the loss of, of national sovereignty, the destruction of the nation state, the destruction of borders. Um, I mean, that's a, a consequence to this pandemic is this idea of the globalists not wanting borders. And no, you can't shut down or restrict flights from China. And you can't shut down or prohibit flights from you know these infected areas. And of course, we get infected like everybody else. So you're seeing it. You're seeing it play out. You're seeing the consequence to it. But they, they are. So what do you think? Do you think they are? This was a whole pandemic that included China being a partner to it? Or do you think China was rogue in this and that the globalist and the agenda is they're just jumping on this as an opportunity? Okay, where I'm at right now, and you know, things change based on new data. You know, it's a scientific method. Sure. But I think what happened was is that once the weapons program transferred over to the P4 lab in Wuhan, that there was a, a there, there was a, um, a biological accident and one or a few of the researchers were infected when they were handling the animals. I'm not sure if they were bats or if they were primates, but somehow they were infected. Okay. And that was leaked out when they went home. They probably, you know, cleaned up. They didn't realize they were infected because of the, you know, asymptomatic, you know, situation. Yeah. And then eventually it starts spreading. I think that's how it leaked out from people lab. So it was, on, it was on accident when it leaked out. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not using this opportunity to to do a New World Order move. Exactly. That they may have, you know, you know, maybe they were planning, you know, a few years later in a different way. But um, I think they're definitely taking it as an opportunity to do the New World Order play. And right. you can see it. I mean, when Nancy Pelosi wrote into that bill, that stimulus bill, decashing. Or what they call the digital dollar, the digital, yeah. you know, digital currency. I mean, and then they, they knocked it out. But I mean, but it was just screaming. That new world order play. So um, we got to understand that we, we, that communism is creeping into America. You know, and, you know, and, 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 and we need to, it has been know, for a long time. Yeah, you know, here, you know, I was, you know, I, you know, I was born in 1972, right? So, so I remember, one yeah, so I remember the Carter days, you know, and and one of my yeah. most important memories actually was of the Iran um, hostage crisis, yeah. and the ineptitude of President Carter. And then when Reagan came in, they let those those hostages out because he showed force. He said, hey, you know, you're not messing with us anymore. And so. I was kind of raised under the, the, the Reagan doctrine. You know, you have to fight communism with force. Absolutely. Right? You know, trust but verify type thing. You know, so you can, you, you got to, but here's the, here's the weird part about it. Even though Putin, obviously, you know, comes from Russia and is, you know, is a communist, right? KGB, yeah. You're right, you know, but the bigger enemy is China. And how we fought Nazism was a two-front war. It was the Eastern Front and the Western Front, right? The United States and Britain, you know, did the Western Front and, and Russia did, did did the Eastern Front against, against Hitler. We need, we need actually to engage and be more friendly to Russia so we can fight the CCP. Right. I'm not against the Chinese people. Of course, the CCP yeah. is as evil as, as Satan. Right? And, and, and you know, and the, the way to fight Russia, the, the way to fight uh, the CCP is to have a two-front war, where the United States does the, the Eastern Front, and we have Russia do the Northern Front. And we can have India, you know, do the Southern, Absolutely. the Southern Front. You know, you know, with back up with with um, with uh, Australia. So, do you, do you think this leads to war of that nature? 
I believe, and the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, which is the, the government, it's the army component of, of, of the CCP, mm -hmm. um, has has telegraphed the idea that they want to control the island chains by 2025. Right. So I believe that there's going to be a conflict with the United States and China in the Pacific Ocean by then. Mm -hmm. So it, it's coming. And if you want to extrapolate this, I think the weapons program, even though it was leaked out by accident, they were planning on using it to weaken the United States so they could make the move in the Pacific Ocean. Well, it only makes sense. And, and I mean, with any historical context, if anybody's read a history book, they understand, you know, the, the, the communist agenda as a whole it doesn't it doesn't lend itself to a lot of barriers. I mean, they'll do whatever it takes to forward their agenda and do what's, what, what they think is right. And this is my concern when you, I mean, China has an incredible amount of influence globally, but within the UN and within that agenda, because ultimately if they achieve their goals, if they get to their 2030 goals, I mean, we're all under socialism. We're all under that, that whole framework. Uh, so there's there's a lot to be said about China's influence and how they're part of this, and ultimately the destruction of Western civilization. You know, of course, being in the States, I mean, you guys are the, the lighthouse for Western civilization. You are, without the United States, we might as well all pack in. Um, so it, I find it very interesting. Now, when China says, and it, it's, it's said fairly recent history, that they, they simply can't go to war with the United States, they're not strong enough as a military. It, I mean, when you look at this, and you look at this this virus and this pandemic, and where it originated, and, and all, connect all those dots, I mean, it's not hard to understand that this was this was done on purpose, at least in the sense, as you said, you know, if it was leaked out, they took no precautions to prevent its spread. And they love to see now the dismantling of our economies. And the reason why I talk so much about the UN in this regard is because I watch Trudeau, our prime minister and his government, I mean, they're puppets to the, to the World Health Organization and the UN. They do exactly what they're told by those by those foreign entities. Right in line, along with this pandemic and everything that transpired, we didn't shut down the borders, we, we, we didn't take any precautions of, of <clears throat> preventing a curve rather than now flattening it with their whole um, lockdown. So I, you know, I think I think it's it's all connected globally. And and I, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, for sure. I mean, look, there's two countries that are really fighting global, the, the globalists, and that was what happened in England. You know, the UK yeah. at large uh, with Brexit and the United States with Donald, Donald Trump, President Donald Trump. Um, you know, that's those are you know the bellwethers right there. You know, and the canary in the coal mine, right? But right. we fall, the new world order happens. That's right. And unfortunately, Absolutely. unfortunately, there are individuals that have infiltrated. The governments in the UK and in the United States and that, 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 yeah, that's pushing the, the new world agenda. And yeah. we need to hunt them down, expose them, and kick them out. Yes, you know? absolutely. And, agree. And, and, and you know, I, I you know, I'm, we need to say as a, as a collective group, enough mm -hmm. is enough. And we're taking back our country, and we're going to pre 9 11 day. We're, we're not going to have this never ending surveillance. And, absolutely. You know, and we, you know, we're just, I, you know, my my grandmother right, came from Romania. All right, she lost her mother and her brother from the Holocaust. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, we all know from history. You know, they tattooed the Jews and the Gypsies, and you know. And you know, had the death camps and the death marches and all that. Mm. You know, we, yeah. we know the history of that. But what is happening right now is very similar. Absolutely. There, there, there's there, there's a there's a Holocaust there's a Holocaust happening right now. Mm. And there's the numbering of individuals. There's the cremation of the bodies. There's this. I mean, it, it, it's it's just been at a global scale. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know to, to to march in this this new world order type stuff. So I, that's why I in in trying to raise the alarm and, and tell definitely American citizens, but the world at large, that you need to engage and tell your representatives in, in you know the countries that have democracy um, that. That your representatives need to be told, no decaching, no forced vaccinations. Stop with the never-ending police state. And you know, you know, we're tired of having top-down government. Yeah. And we, we have to be engaged citizens. We have to be informed, and but we have to be active. So that's that's, being that's, be active. that's the trick, though, Paul. Is how do you how do you activate masses that have been so thoroughly indoctrinated? They've been so thoroughly hypnotized, well, and they're, they're all sleeping. Well, zombies. Well, how do you do that? Typically, you know, in the past, and I'm talking about millennia. Right? Mm. It was the males. If the herd, the population were at risk. The case species, the wolves, the sheepdogs, would go out and they would protect the society. Right? It was the males. Well, what has happened with the poisoning of our foods and the GMOs and the fluorination of the water? It has reduced testosterone. Well, and just, and just have, the, and the cultural narrative against masculinity, right? Yeah, yeah, that too, that too. I mean, so there's that, that sociological component, but there's also there's also a physiological component to it. Mm -hmm. So, but there's this this down regulation of testosterone. So, any of the sheepdogs out there, you now have um, you know a, a lack of individuals that are alerted to fight. It's the women that have children that we target mm -hmm. and say, hey. If you want to make sure that your, your children are not forced vaccinated and they're living in a free society, you have to get engaged. Because I don't think that the, the guys out there, and, and, I'm not saying everybody, but you know, but many many guys out there, I don't think that they're engaged. They'll listen, but they're, for some reason they have this this um you know this this part of their physiology, part of their sociological um, reprogramming where they're not acting. But mother's instinct is such a powerful component. Mm, that's interesting. The need to, to to protect their children. That I don't think that the socialization nor the weaponization of food will crush that. Will, will crush that. Right? That's who you target. You target. Yeah, you target to, to say, "Hey, you want to save save the country and make sure your, your children live under freedom and not tyranny." You talk to the mothers, and they will understand. They'll go, "You know what? I'm seeing this, this, and this, and I'm 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 fighting and I'm protecting my, my children from it." 
but I think, Paul, I think there's been such a, a heavy indoctrination in our schools. And of course, mothers are very much more attached to the schools and their children and, and children being in school than, than the dads are, the fathers are. Of course, a lot of fathers aren't in the picture anymore. I mean, there's a whole, you know, cultural, societal thing there. But but I think, you know, they've been they've been hypnotized as well, the mothers have. And, and I mean, I, I'm a recent political candidate. And as I'm, as I'm you know, knocking door to door throughout my, my writing, you know, I'm coming up to mothers and I'm asking them what's the most important thing to you in this election. And predominantly it was climate change, not because they understood climate change or they understood <laughs> you know they, they're they're given a narrative mostly by their kids that get it from school and the mothers just tend to go along with what the rest of the mothers and the families are doing and and so it, it's a hard nut to crack even still i, I completely understand your perspective on, on mama bears and, and i think that is instinctual and i think you can draw on that but i you know i, I still see a greater issue with society and sort of the way our culture has gone but i still at that time i also i also think and i, I believe that <clears throat> as mothers have that instinctual protection thing going on for children i think people in general that live in canada the states some of the western nations they have this innate sense of of um, defend, wanting to defend freedom and, and sovereignty. I just don't think they understand how that's all being attacked, right? So one of my well, big challenges is to get to the folks, right? Yeah, and that's why we need you know these types of conversations on the internet and, and jam, jam the transmission of mainstream media. We need to create such a noise, create such a noise that mm -hmm. they just go, hey, something's not right with mainstream media. They've been programming us to think a certain way. Absolutely, and you know, and but we can do it. We can do it. I mean, actually, there's more power in what we're doing mm -hmm. than the mainstream media. You know, because there's, there's millions of us. There's only right. the big five in the mainstream media, right? Right. So we have power numbers. All we have to do is just be a little bit more coordinated in our message. I think that's a great point. Coordination is huge. And, and, and narrowing that message a little because, I, you know, there's so many of us. But that's the thing with people that like freedom and like individual liberty is we tend to stick within, you know, what we are ourselves rather than the collective, right? That's sort of the, the, the difference between us and, and, and folks that are more global and leftist and whatever. It's all about the collective. So it's that's the challenge that we have because we are so, you know, staunchly there to defend our individual rights that we tend not to come together to fight, you know, for a common cause uh, until maybe, you know, it, it, it turns to violence maybe. But so it's, it's, it's a tough nut to crack on, on, on this side of things. Wait, let me tell you something that's kind of funny. It's not funny, but it's kind of funny. All right, so I actually called Governor Cuomo's office back in early February because we had insider information from a healthcare worker working in radiology from one of the hospitals in Buffalo, New York, that proved, that proved that they had COVID-19 case, six of them, five of them were mild, and one of them was more severe, that the CDC was not telling the Johns Hopkins database. And we could prove it, right? I called Governor Cuomo's office saying, uh, what are you doing about it? This is before they started doing the quarantining in uh, Westchester and uh, on Long Island, right? No answer. I worked up the chain. I worked up the chain in the phone system and talked to the, the, uh, the health officials from the state and you know said, this is a really important issue here that needs to be handled or people are gonna die, right? That was early February. I get an email. I was told that I had to write a letter, so I did it on, on their website. About three or four days later, maybe a week, I get an email from Governor Cuomo, and it stated his most important policy is to stop climate change. You believe that? And then, about a week and a half later, we have huge cases starting to blip up in New York City. If he took my advice and started the lockdown, then, when I made that call, people would have been saved. Right. We have over 5,000 people that have died just in New York. City, 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 not state, not state level, 10,000, or over 10,000. 12,000, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, yeah, you know, it, it depends on, you know, the time you actually refresh the, the screen, because every time you refresh the screen, there's a new deck. But, you know, the, the, the point here is, is that he was late to the party. He wasn't listening to, you know, to, to the, um, the grassroots level, saying, hey, we have a problem. And, you know, that, that, that's a, we, we had representatives that were tone deaf. Mm -hmm. And they, they had this mindset. Climate change, climate change, climate change, whatever it is, climate change, climate change. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's this black swan event that happens, and it changes the whole paradigm of things. And the most important thing in America right now is this disease, is right. COVID-19. That's <laughs> the most important thing in the world. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it just, unfortunately, you don't have the mainstream media um, reporters asking that question. You know, it's like, why didn't you, yeah. why didn't you, you know, react you know, uh, quicker on this? People right. were reaching out to his office, and I was one of them, and I recorded it. And I, I, I have the, the recording on my channel, right. um, you know, so people can listen to it. And they were very confrontational, and they didn't want to listen. But why? I don't know. But the only thing that they cared about at that time, and he sent an email, you know, stating that the only thing that was the most important for the state of New York was the climate change. Climate and change. that is by far, by far the, the least worry. That, See, I think, you know, I think, you know, that's a perfect example. I think what happens everywhere. I think you have the top who, who might, who probably do in most cases have a lot more information than anybody else. And, and they're going and taking things in a direction that nobody can understand, although they do. But the rest underneath the whole bureaucracy, you know, they're paid to follow, right? They're paid to just do what they're told. And they, they're not paid to research. They're not paid to get outside of their box. They have their job description. They have, you know, what they're supposed to focus on. And that's what they do. And so this whole bureaucracy is moving in the direction that the top is telling it to without any questioning. And that goes for the media too. You know, the, the, the media, you know, right up to the UN level, they have a media compact that, that they've all signed on to. And they have a narrative to promote. And all of the underlings are just, you know, the reporters on the ground there, probably a lot of them, I would suggest, are screaming to talk about something that means something other than just a narrative. But that's what they have to do. Yeah, I mean, the, the, unfortunately, the mainstream media are complicit in this crisis, just like they were complicit when we started invading the Middle East and not asking the right questions right after 9-11, and even before that, when we were doing Desert Storm. 
you know, for Iraq one, some people may not know what I'm talking about, you know, if they're younger, but, but, you know, back in George Bush senior's day, we invaded Iraq because they invaded Kuwait and we had uh, Desert Shield and then and moved operations into what we call Desert Storm. It lasted for about, about 102 hours or something like that. Yeah. But, but, you know, but, uh, you know, we, we, um, you know, we had a, a news, um, network back then that was really promoting the agenda and they would get special access to the Pentagon if they towed the line. The same thing happened right after 9-11. Don't ask too many questions about, don't ask too many questions about the, 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 uh, the towers falling and, you know, Tower 7. And why was it pre-wired? The buildings don't get pre-wired. Right. You don't, you know, you don't go work in a building that's been pre-wired. I mean, Tower 7 was pre-wired. That, that's self-evident because they couldn't tear down the building. You know, the, the firefighters wouldn't have gone into a burning building with a bunch of C4. You know, and it takes hours, if not days, to properly wire a building for it to fall like that. You know, so Tower 7 was pre-wired. Now, the big question is why? You know, so, you know, and that's the system thinking. You know, when you start asking why several times, you get to the root cause. Well, why that's this, why, why, why? I always say, that's what you say, like, I always say when I'm on my show, and talking, it always boils down to the why, and then ask why again, and then ask why again. You know, like you did when you were a kid and you're pissed off your dad because you kept asking why, but that's what you have to do, especially with these things, is because the, the rabbit hole, the, the why, the answers to these why's take you down the rabbit hole to where, where the answers are. I, you know what? I think there's a lot of people that don't want the answers, Paul. I think they just hope that their little world they created around this bubble around them just stays comfortable and, and they don't want to know what's happening. But I think this whole pandemic thing is burst while well, well, it reminds me of the, the, the song by Pink Floyd, Comfortably Numb, yeah. by the, you know, on the wall album. You know, they, 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 you know that's, they want to live in that bubble. They need to be comfortably numb. Uh, so, you know, so they, they're not stressed out so they can cope with society. Mm-hmm. You know, and at times, you know, because it's stressful. I mean, I'm, I'm going 100% on this. Okay. I've been doing it every day, every day yeah. since January 25th. Mm-hmm. And I'm burned out and yeah. I'm tired. And there, there are times where I just say, you know, Maybe it's just better to just you know pretend it's not exist. That, 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 you know, and that, but you know, I think the, the reality kicks in. Yeah, you know, yeah. When I get when I get an email, you know, from someone you know giving me new information, and it's like you know, and that's that recharges me. It's important. Um, yeah, I know. And I go through the same thing. I go through you know, I go up and down. It's like some days I just you know what I'm overwhelmed. I just I just I gotta shut down. I gotta put it all away. In fact, I'm going to the bush tomorrow. I'll just to get away. But but it's been every day. And I, but I think it's you know at the end of the day, what we're doing is important. And I don't have all the answers. And, and I know you don't think to have all the answers. But we have to be able to talk about these things and, and and get it and bust through the mainstream and bust through the the narrative that that we're we're fighting against and, and start getting these things. You know, and lots of people are doing that. I'm seeing more and more of it grow. So a couple more questions, Paul, and then I'll let you go so you can get some rest. But one of the things, how do you, do you think 5G has anything to do, and this goes along with conspiracy theories, but I think conspiracy theories are important too. I think they're part of the, the, the puzzle. But do you think 5G is related to the virus in any way, or the, or the sickness or the illness in any way? So Mike Adams and I had an episode uh, last week on Thursday that has been published on Brighton and on my channel too, I mirrored it, um, <clears throat> that talks about this very, this very topic. And 5G does affect the immune system and increase something called NF-kappa. And if you have an overproduction of NF kappa, which is a pro-inflammatory cytokine, then you will you, you will start having um, you know a, a inflammatory response. You'll start now. Is that your immune system relation to to how close you are to a five G unit, or is yeah, this yeah? Like, but in general, in general, electromagnetic radiation in general. Yeah. Let's just talk okay. in general here. Yeah. Electromagnetic radiation does affect the immune system by upregulation right. of NF kappa beta or NF, uh, NF uh, kappa, um, right. and that that causes inflammation. All right. And when you have more inflammation, it will lead to disease, disease states. I mean, just like if your immune system is down or if you're overly inflamed, mm-hmm. then you're not going to be able to fight pathogens as well. Right. It's, there's also evidence that when you are in this kind of state, the stress state by electromagnetic radiation, then what will happen is, is that you will, um, the, the, the body will start to upregulate or downregulate certain processes within the cell. And those, one of those uh, things that happens if the cell is stressed is upregulate uh, something called GRP78. It's a chaperone protein. The chaperone protein is in the cytoplasm and moves them into the um, endoplasmic reticulum. Or process to be folded. Proteins have to be folded a certain way to be active. So they're usually inactive when they're created and they have to go through a process. Well, the chaperone proteins move that to, to, to process. If you have stress, certain chaperone proteins upregulate and they actually move to the cell surface for uh, cell signal. Well, this particular virus actually utilizes the GRP78, not just the H2 receptor. So if you, with electromagnetic radiation, it causes cellular stress that causes certain proteins to be manufactured and certain proteins not to be manufactured. So there is a physiological response to electromagnetic radiation. Now, if you, for example, uh, cut, um, let's say two, if you have two cadavers and you had a sensor that was in the center of these cadavers um, and you had one, you have two of them, you had one being bombarded by 4G and, and the other one being bombarded by 5G, you'll get more tissue penetration by the 4G signal than the 5G signal. The thing is, is that even though tissue penetration is more in 4G, the resolution of the, of the, of the penetration, being uh, the, the, the focusing of, of, of it, is much more with 5G than 4G. So if you, if you went to the tissue level of where 5G stops, penetrates right at that level and you compare it to the 4g tissue level at the same at the same level of the two different cadavers you'll notice that you'll have more targeting than the 4g all right more resolution if you want to call it that all right so it's very it's very likely that electromagnetic radiation like 5g will increase in some cells not all cells but some cell types um and increase uh ros which is reactive oxygen species that leads down this pathway to nf kappa and so we talked about that on Mike's show, Mike Adams' show, Health Ranger. And there is also um, discussion, how does it affect the hemoglobin? 
and this hypoxia that these individuals are having. You get hypoxia 1 through ARDS, which is the fluid building up in your lung, and you're not getting the, the gas exchange between carbon dioxide and oxygen. And so you have less oxygen you know, in, your, in your red blood cells. Um, but there is something called non-ARDS, where you might not have the fluid buildup, but you still have the hypoxia. So what is that mechanism? And, you know, people are you know, suggesting maybe it's, you know, exogenous stress, like electromagnetic. So um, it's still up in the air exactly the uh, mechanism for the heme group and how it modifies the, um, the, um, the topology of that, that, that molecule. If the molecule changes shape a little bit, it doesn't have the affinity it should for oxygen. That might be part of the problem. It also could be something called um, uh, uh, acidosis, where you, you might have um, an inflammatory response still being non-ARDS. And that acidosis may be changing shape for those red blood cells to prevent the proper attachment of those oxygen molecules. So that's still in, in investigation. But we do know that electromagnetic radiation does, does increase um, reactive oxygen species and an inflammatory response to the buildup of NF cap. Very interesting. Uh, one more question before I let you go. Uh, well, so what would you have done if you were, let's say you were ahead of, you know, on Trump's team and you heard about this virus that was coming from China or was in China and couldn't lead to a pandemic and oops, looks like it is going to be a pandemic. What are the steps you would have taken at that point immediately? What have you have done to avoid a curve and just keep it flat? I know you can't completely insulate a country from something like this, but what are the steps that you would have taken um, if you right had when, that position? Right when we started seeing a huge outbreak in Wuhan, all flights, all ports of entry into the United States needed to be closed at that point. And a big discussion needed to be had where do we do a 40 day quarantine or not? I would have recommended doing the 40 day quarantine right then and now because most likely, because there's a lot of agents that come in for graduate school in the United States, that the virus was already in the United States spreading early uh, early December, you know, around or maybe late November during the Thanksgiving uh, holiday. So you had individuals, either family members from Asia coming in to see the grad students or the grad students going home for a week or, or four or five days and coming back. Right. And they were asymptomatic. And then, you know, you start seeing influenza-like syndrome in all these different states like New York. And it started, influenza-like cases started on December 18th. So we started, we had epidemiological curves that showed influenza-like symptoms or syndrome in different states that were way above the normal when comparing last year's and then comparing this year's. There was a big delta going, you know, from mid-December to late December, okay? With that data, with knowing what was happening in Wuhan, there's a strong argument to shut down the whole country for 40 days. And that would have, that would have isolated who the, you know, where the virus was, right? It would have been contained within a, a small population and they could have been easily treated. And we would have only lost 40 days of the economy in the country. Instead, we tried to do a managed um, um, epidemiological, um, you know, situation in the United States. And that is now extending for months, you know, of economic hardship. It's better to take the pain right away Absolutely. than, than, than to, to, to draw this out because you're gonna cause more economic damage no. and, and more disease spread. So what do you say to people then that say, well, it's, you know, the numbers are still less than the flu, than influenza, you know, as we look through the, the numbers for the past number of years, the flu still has killed more people, there's more cases of flu, why are we all uptight about this? Well, let, let's, um, let's, let, let's uh, look at the details of influenza. In the United States, depending on the year, mm -hmm. uh, we have about 50 to 60,000 people that die from influenza, okay? We have right now, according to Johns Hopkins database, as we're filming this, 23,600 cases in the United States that die, okay? Right. We're, we're almost half of that 50,000 mark. Oh, right, and we just started with one, right? right? right. We haven't had a full year of Wuhan yet, so right. we're blow past the death, the death toll in the United States alone. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of in terms of number infected with COVID nineteen, right. the United States we have uh, just under six hundred thousand. Right, what you say both are, no, well, it's, I, I think <laughs> I think we're in the millions in terms of how many people actually have COVID. Right. We just haven't tested for it, so this gets to the point that we haven't yeah. tested enough to, right. to show. But now let's think back when they say twenty five million people normally get influenza in the United States, and you have about fifty thousand, anywhere right. from fifteen to twenty five million get influenza, and about fifty to sixty thousand can die, all right? And that's over a full year of analysis. They don't test for influenza as right. vigorously as this. Right. They are projecting how many people get influenza. Hmm. They, there is no data that states emphatically that there was 25 million. Right. So, it's, it's, they just get, right. so you don't really know how many unless you test. And that's what's happening in the United States now. Is that we don't know how many people actually have COVID-19 until we test for it. Right. So when people say, well, we're comparing the test numbers to the projected numbers on influenza, that they get influenza, that's not comparing apples to apples. Because you need, what are the actual tested influenza cases? And, and that creates more questions, too, when you talk about COVID, because, you, I mean, obviously, you say there's probably millions, and I agree, uh, just because of the lack of testing. But then the death rate, then, of course, would dramatically change. Yeah, go down. Right? Yeah, go down. Yeah. Go down. So, right. uh, you know, again, is it, like, for me, <clears throat> I think initial steps should have been taken. I think flights should have been shut down. Um, you know, we could have secured our border. I mean, we still got people flowing into our country from Roxham Road into Quebec. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but uh, it's sort of an alley that they take in a lot of migrants get into Canada that way and it's still open. But anyway, you know, so we could have taken those steps. And I think, you know, as far as 
managing than whatever we have to manage at that point. It's okay. So let's isolate people that are 60 or 65 and older and people with some pre-existing conditions, you know, some underlying issues, maybe we'll isolate those folks, but let's keep the economy going. Let's people, let people go to work, let, let people you know, wear a mask. Uh, if that's, I don't know what your feelings are with masks, but uh, you know, take some steps so we can keep the economy at least chugging along uh, instead of complete destruction that we're seeing now. I think it's one of those to take them, take powerful medicine early, meaning the 40 days, 40 nights philosophy. Mm-hmm. And so shut it all down. Shut, shut, it, shut it all down. Shut it all down. Mm-hmm. And and the probability. So it's, it's based on probability. So if you have a bell shaped curve of, of people that are possibly infected, if you have a 14 day lockdown, then you have about a 33 percent chance, roughly, uh, uh, um, to still have infected people coming out of that lock, lockdown after 14 days. If you do 30 day lockdown, then you have about five percent. So just an extra 14, you know, extra 15 days, you only have a five percent chance of, of of people being infected. If you do a 40 day, then you're down to only a half a percent. So people need to realize it's it's, it's non linear. People always think linear, right? But if you take the pain early, you have the ability to contain it, just like we were able to contain Ebola. Because Ebola, we could contain Ebola because we could isolate those patients really quickly. And also, unfortunately, Ebola kills the patient quickly. So the, the chances of it spreading through the whole society like this is rare, right? Because they would just kill the patient too quickly to, to spread. The patient gets sick, they're incapacitated, and they die. So, um, so taking the pain, or what Steve Bannon says, smash the curve instead of flattening the curve. Right. I believe in smashing the curve, and it's less economic damage. It, it's all about MPV. Uh, net present value, right? Mm-hmm. You know, for the ones that are in finance. So we want to evaluate the project. You calculate the MPV, especially if it's a multi-year project. So you can figure out how what your you know what your outlays are and your inlays and and uh, discounted for a certain um, interest rate, right? Your discounted rate. So once you do that calculation, you calculate the net present value. And any net present value that has the highest number is the project that you should should do. If you don't have enough resources to do all the projects, okay? So that MPV um, is much higher by doing a 40-day, 40 40-night 40 lockdown than this surgical. You know, only a certain parts of the country or certain certain cohorts of, 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 of uh, constituents because what will happen is, is that you'll have it extend for many more months mm-hmm. and you'll have to shut that area down and then that area and there's cross infection and, it, and it, 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 it's bad news on, on you know it scares people to not spend money and all that it's just it's, it's more painful but it's just better to shut everything down except essential services obviously but you know to shut you know shut the majority of the system down for 40 days and to be able to, to treat the residual well, and, right and, now, we're you know, and it's especially understanding that those steps are going to allow us to open it back up you know in this period it's not going to have it now there's so much uncertainty and, and length attached to everything one, I, have to, I can't let you go without asking you one more question. It might be a long answer, but how do vaccines work into this? What's your feeling on vaccines? Especially, well, yeah. especially when we're talking about Gates and, and everything else. That I, I, am not a, I am not a big fan of the messenger RNA platform that they're promoting. It's very new. They, we do not know the long-term effects. We don't know with these vaccines if it affects oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes. We just don't know. And I don't want to be taking a vaccine that we don't have a lot of data on, um, you know, in terms of the efficacy of the platform. That's just the, the basic platform, the messenger RNA platform, let alone dealing with a new vaccine with a whole new bioengineered virus you have exactly. no idea what the you know what the the externalities are as it gains function to these other receptors uh, right. I, I i am very suspicious on this on, on this uh, well, vaccine and i much prefer a therapeutic you know like uh you know like remdesivir or, or hydroxychloroquine but, but but they're but they're not they're not a silver bullet you know certain mm-hmm. patients can't take hydroxychloroquine because of right. the side effects and all this so it's you know it's it's a, it's a really it's a really difficult situation but i do not trust that messenger rna platform at all Right. I'm, not, well, I'm not anti-vax. I want people to understand. Right. I'm not anti-vax. I'm not pro-vax. I mean, right. it's like I'm in the middle. I want safe vaccines. I'm safe. Right. You know, I want safe vaccines, and I don't want a scheduling for for the young. We're yeah. so accelerated that it's causing damage to the children. You know, I want safe vaccines. Well, so I, I mean, my, my concern with this whole vaccine narrative is number one, Gates, and how you know what his agenda is, and you know, big pharma, and you know, all of that Fauci lobbying for big, all these things that are attached to it. But the other problem is, okay, so there's a vaccine for this particular SARS-CoV-2, right? And we've developed it, we've researched it, however long that takes. So, I mean, Gates is suggesting, our prime minister is suggesting, we're gonna have to be quarantined or locked down for 18 months until this virus has been properly tested and gone through all this whatever. And so, great. So they come up with this vaccine that is going to be effective to, for for SARS-CoV-2, and then immediately the Chinese they probably have shelves of different vaccines that they could. Oops, release again and, and we're right back to square one and so we're finished really they have us by the balls for eternity if we play into this game i totally agree with you and that's why it's important <coughs> to get educated on how to boost your immune system in a homeopathic or a nutraceutical way because if you boost your immune system you have less you're less likely to get sick but the authoritarians and the totalitarians don't want you to know that and the, and the multinationals the big pharma don't want you to know that so you know I, I mean but the thing is is that channels like yours and mine or you know many yeah. others. We're, we're getting the word out that nutraceuticals and homeopathy are part of the answer to boost your immune system and fight this. If you want to call it medical tyranny? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not. An, it's not an end all. There are times where you need to see an homeopathic doctor because they have better medicines for you. Right. And in certain diseases, there isn't a homeo, you know, homeopathic option. But in general, to boost your health, it's proper eating, diet. proper filter, diet, diet, exercise, proper you know filtration of water. Um, you know, getting, you know, the right vitamins and minerals in, in your body. There's lots of different nutraceuticals out there that can, you know, be anti-inflammatory, like, you know, the turmeric and, and whatnot, um, different spices, different, um, you know, herbs, 
uh, there is there's just a there's antiviral stuff that's you know that that's only about you know like like for example uh, birch uh, birch bark extract is an antiviral licorice root is an antiviral um, you know red uh, red algae extract is an antiviral beef oil is an antiviral so there's lots of compounds out there that people buy from their nutraceutical store or health food store that that can boost their immune system and you'd be amazed that if you do if you stick to this kind of regimen you know over over time that it, it's like compound interest it, it it builds and builds and builds and you actually have more energy and you you're healthier you're, you you think more clearly and you know but big pharma wants a sick society right you know and that's how they make money they won't make money if you're well they want you they want you sick because that's how they you know that's how the, the ceos you know get you know higher stock options absolutely so where do you and where do you and shiva diverge because i mean he's a systems guy he's a all about you know health and your body being in a healthy immune system and diet and all these things so where where do you guys diverge and we can end on this well it is it's, it's, it, this is kind of just funny you know yeah. collegiate collegiate funniness but uh you know he's in my team harvard so right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just, that's just a joke. but yeah. um you know but, but i i think um see i was supposed to interview dr shiva uh mm. shortly after Oppenheimer ranch interviewed him mm. and i talked to manju uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so so what was interesting is that i sent manju the uh the zoom link uh we were supposed to talk at 4 p.m new york time i mm. sent manju the link at 1 30 p.m 15 minutes later, Lower Manhattan's internet went down. Right, down. Mm. Right? And I wasn't able to, to reach anybody. Yeah. So so I, via my cell phone, I reached out to Manju saying, hey, I got an internet problem for some reason. Uh, Dr. Shiva got on another call at 420 when the internet went back up. All right? And I, I, we missed we, we, we right. missed the, the recording. I haven't been able to reschedule with uh, Manju yet. Mm. But I found it really interesting that Lower Manhattan internet went down mm. 15 minutes after I sent Manju the Zoom link to, to link up. And that it was 20 minutes after the recording was supposed to start when it went back up and Dr. Sheep was already on another call. So it's conspiratorial, but I think that someone did not want me to talk to Dr. Sheep. And I specifically wanted to talk to Dr. Sheep about Biopatriot. And if he gets in as a senator, what is he doing to roll back to a pre-9-11 day? I, you know, so I I am like right with, I, I'm i pretty much right with what he's saying. There may be, you know, minor details of, of, of difference. But I thought there was a biology divergence there between. I don't think so. I don't know. You know, he's, you know, he's, you know, he, he, you know, he's a system thinker. I'm a system thinker. You know, yeah. I, you know, I did my, you know, the beginning of my career, a big part of my early career was in automotive engineering. Yep, he's a system thinker for automotive engineering. And so, you know, he's coming from an engineering perspective. He is holistic. He's thinking in a holistic fashion. And he's, and he's saying that nutraceuticals is the way to boost up your immune system, and we're right in line with that. He's yeah. saying that Fauci, you know, is yeah. complicit in, 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 in this, you know, in this pandemic and how it's managed. I totally agree with him on that. Mm -hmm. um, he has a, a deep knowledge about how to let's say re-engineer the medical education mm. you know where it's more holistic right I, I agree with him on that mm. um so i don't see a lot of differences in, in at least i i you know but i don't know a lot about dr sheep i've seen right. i've seen his interviews with uh i think it was Tucker, Tucker carlson mm. yeah and i think uh and um and i saw his interview with Oppenheimer range mm. and uh, uh, another news network yeah. but I, I don't see really a difference I, you know if there is a difference i'm not aware of it man. yeah i guess no, i'll find I, out if he's on my yeah channel. i think there's, there was some minor i was hoping to have him on earlier today uh we had him scheduled to, i haven't been able to get in touch with manju uh, at all so i don't know what happened it just ended up mia but i was hoping that we'd be able to sort of let you guys get to that and i was actually hoping that during our conversation now that maybe he would want to join to have that discussion but we'll see what the what, what i think there's more in common i think there's more oh, absolutely. with dr shiva and myself uh yeah. then then there are oh, absolutely there. and if there are different yeah, things, yeah, with everything I've watched between you, you two, um, like I said, there's very little difference. Uh, I think there's just there's something there that uh, biologically that's different um, than than what you suggested. But I, I was gonna ask that question and, and go from there. But maybe I mean, anyway. you know, he might. I, mean, I, you know, I don't know if he's as knowledgeable about you know the, the, the Fort Detrick issue, the P4 right. leakage, Doctor Xi, you know, being right. the, the you know the, the, the lead, um, you know, the papers that, that show the HIV homology. I don't know if he you know if he's dived into that that level. I mean, if he's running for if he's running for senator. I right. think that he doesn't have the time to be reading all those papers. He should yeah. not be reading all those papers if he really wants to be. <laughs> exactly, right? You know, because, you know, he's got other yeah. things to you know to yeah. try to focus his attention on. But um, I, I don't, I don't see, the, I, I don't know what the difference if there is a difference. No. Great. Well, where can people find you, Paul? Okay, the best way to, to reach me is uh, my YouTube channel. It's Paul Cottrell. I have a backup channel called Doctor Paul Cottrell because of obviously you know the shadow banning that's taking place. Yep. Um, and in all of my videos, I have links to my website that has the supporting documentation, especially the PDFs that people can read. I suggest that they read all those PDFs because it gives you a deep understanding of how I got to the conclusions that I have, you know, come to. Um, you know, uh, and you know, my Twitter and my, my Facebook links are on those on all those videos. So the best way is to subscribe to to my YouTube channel and you know to follow along as we you know I, I say as we are moving forward on the battlefield, you know, going through this because it is you know it is a team effort, it, you know, and. and we need more coordination at, at this level. You know, your channel, my channel, Stephen Molyneux's channel. You'll notice that what, what, what just happened, and you're going to see more of this, hmm. is trying to do a focused coordination on a particular topic. So we reach more audience and people will go, wait a minute, I just heard that from there, and I just heard that from there. It's the same thing that mainstream media is doing to us. Exactly. So but exactly. we're going to do it. 
We're, we're starting to do that now, all right? And yes. we're the next target, mark my words, the next target is Fauci. Right. Tedros. That's yes. the, 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 those yes. are the next target. Absolutely, but you're right. It's repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. And it's, you know, I mean, the mainstream media, they've been doing this for years, they're masters at it. It's seven second sound bites and boom, one after another. And they all say the same thing. Doesn't matter if you listen to the local, regional, or national right. news. So, so we're going to do it because, because they have, because of the way their, their platform is, they have to, because of their platform, and they have to, you know, advertise a lot, and they only have, you know, sound bites. We don't have to do that. We can yeah. have a very in depth conversation about these issues, and it will create a, it, it, will, add, it will add to the street cred. Because if you only hear a 30 second soundbite or even a two minute soundbite from mainstream mm -hmm. media, but you're hearing a 30 minute soundbite, right. you're going to get the street credit. Right. But that happens when we start to reach a certain critical mass of the number of channels that are saying the same thing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, bang on. I agree 100%. We absolutely, that's what we need to do. And I, I, I think I've said critical mass about a thousand times in the last couple of years, but we have to get there. We have to, you know, like you say, and, and just repeat, repeat, repeat. So yeah, we're on the same page for sure. Well, I thanks for coming on my show. I, you know, I really appreciate it. And I'd like to have you on again, you know, yeah, a couple of weeks, three weeks, uh, just to see, you know, where we're at and where you're at and, and see if we can. Uh, and talk about some other things as well, like the Fauci's and the Ted Ross and those things. This is a story, this is a story not on the pandemic that will eventually go away, which yeah. eventually will die down. When? We're not sure. I think it's 18, 20 months. We'll but, do that. But, you know, we'll see, right? But there is the larger picture, and that is our civil liberties, and making yeah. sure that we protect those civil liberties. And that, that's, the, that's the big game. That's yeah. the real big game there. Yep. We're, we're on the same page there too, my friend. All right. Very good. So, uh, thanks. And we'll I'll be in touch with you again when we, uh, when we want to see you again. It won't be long. And I'm going to try to get you on at some point here to reschedule and, and have that conversation, but I appreciate it, Paul. I, I appreciate the conversation, and uh, whenever you need me, just reach out. Sounds All good. Right. Okay. Thanks, man. Bye. All right, so, Dr. Paul Cottrell, uh, fantastic guy. Okay, yeah, of course. Uh, he's, he's a neo-Nazi, but don't worry about that. Um, you got you to gotta download this video and save it. Um, the only way you can find the original videos, the, well, the first video, I'm sorry, is if you do a, a search on him and because it's not listed, so you won't find it on his channel. Don't look on people's channels. Uh, you got to do your own search.